Yes, thank you very much, everyone. Now we are live. Today again, we don't start um, another conversation, another public conversation on um, the Chancery, New York Chancery Building. I believe say everybody who is on camera here, we don't hopefully um, see the video. A couple of videos, live videos that we took from uh, New York at the center of Manhattan. We saw the New York Chancery Building um, day. And for the last two weeks, make us say from, is it here? Yeah, from October 5, I don't know on the road, um, the travel between New York and um, Washington, D.C., and then Illinois, Chicago, and all of that. I still do on the road, by, by the way. So I want to apologize for um, skipping the usual discussion on Saturday. Um, we, you know, that was not deliberate, not to negligence on my part, but we got to be self-critical in terms of um, when we fail for um, live up to what we call a social agreement uh, between we and and the public, the general uh, public of Sierra Leone will all, always rely on we and depend on we for um, initiate. I know we call and lead a conversation, but initiate a conversation or help provide clarity around um, everyday developments that happen in our country. So I, I want to apologize to many of you, those of you who are our dedicated um, followers, dedicated uh, supporters, and um, fellow Sierra Leoneans who always, um, and also friends of Sierra Leone who have come to you know, support the things that we do, support the messages, and help for uh, share the messages. Today, um, of course, we get important developments taking place. And in the middle of those developments, in the middle of the many arguments that are happening around, now we want to initiate a very important conversation dealing with corruption in the country. The New York Chancery Building is a story of corruption. And not only a story of corruption, but one that we can use as an example for try to find out whether we as a country, as a people, you know, we determine, we talk about the commitment to fight against corruption, transparency and accountability, really serious about some of these issues. So before we go into that conversation, I want to ask many of you or those of you who are already present here for uh, help we share the link to this conversation. We are basically uh, providing um, live you know, access to this conversation to many of our people spread across the world in the United States, in Canada, in Europe, the UK, and also um, Australia, and of course, in Sierra Leone and other parts of Africa, as the case may be. Thanks to technology, thanks to um, social media, the, the tools, the new tools of mass communication. And, and this, the, what we can always call the internet revolution has made it possible for citizens of the world to get a conversation, real discussion um, among ourselves and with ourselves and a community conversation, whether the leaders or individuals who appear to have monopolized power and monopolized the media space decide, say, then get a, a, a convenient effort for marginalized alternative voices real voices were independent of the state. So we want to, along those lines, thank then and now, uh, Mr. Prince Chroma and the team at then and now for uh, make this platform available to we, uh, unrestricted access, I, I must say, genuinely um, provided to the African Express and other a few of the independent voices around. And then and now take this decision at a time when many of the political groups, not just SMADABIO and SLPP, but even sectors of the opposition in the APC, in the NGC, and other political parties and political groups and interest groups and media groups and decide, say, part of the new effort right now, now for silence the African Express. Now for make sure, say, my voice and other similar voices not take, not become part of the national conversation. 
So now in the middle of that conversation, in the middle of that effort, now in uh, Prince Koma and then and now say, you know what, in? I will damn the consequences. I not care what the people will say. I don't mind what they will say, but I will make sure, say, whatever time and amount of time when I need through my platform, I am willing to provide it unrestricted and free. So that kind of, uh, I really, I, I, on my own, I sit and thank the brother and, and really appreciate that kind of bold move because it is the kind of decision where, it's the kind of decision that tends to make people uh, unpopular in a sense. Well, I mean unpopular, all man goes. People are way, way used to corruption, the way they support this bad, bad thing and and decide, say, you know, they will avoid you for that, say, well, they can't desert you, they will desert you, they will isolate you, they will make you. So there is power in really looking outside of the crowd, believing that you know the truth has power on its own and regardless of people and decision to isolate you or marginalize your voice that there are also other people who are able or capable for take a stance with truth and do that and then and now is one of those uh platforms that have lived up to that so regardless of the situation i am very much appreciative of the brother uh mr prince koroma his family and other people who have enabled the existence of this platform. You know, you only know people who are genuine when the test, when the lines are really called, when the issues are really called up and, and, and you draw. We all get differences in life. If in a family, you even as a child, you, you must have uh, views that are independent of other family members. But that no goes cut the family because in the final that is a blood is thicker than water. So there is nowhere in society, in the world, where everybody has to think the same. It's impossible. Or everybody can believe in the same things. But disagreements can be expressed, can be held in a principled way, without mamikos, without rudeness, without vulgar language. That is what we call civilization. The essence of democracy is the multiplicity of views and viewpoints across the society. That not the essence of multi-party. If we know if we don't want multiple views in any country, we don't go allow multi-party politics. Even in one party states, we sign a one great political party there and they allow for the country. Each and every individual within that political party will not be united around everything that that political party does. So in a country where the government is, is led by only one party, you find out that not each and every individual within that government will also agree. And I'll tell you, there are many people in Madabio's government who do not agree with Madabio's politics, with Madabio's way of running things, and how the government is functioning. Plenty of them, and some of them in very strategic offices. Very strategic offices. I have heard this, I'll tell you now today, and this is something I usually do not want to say, but make us say this. Sometime last year, very crucial someone in the government of Madabio, Naim Force alert me to the fact say, watch out. At this point, not even trust, you know, uh, people who might come to you as friends. He said, because there is already an effort for locate how you day and how you they move. So be careful about who comes to you and who visits you. And this is a key person where there is no government meeting that happens in Sierra Leone that will not be there. But I think looking at the facts that we all, as Sierra Leoneans, we must have disagreements. There are particular things that people want to do that other people will not agree. You don't, you don't understand. So um, fast forward two years later, when I think about that kind of warning and look at the kind of how we don't uncover the effort of certain opposition politicians who are working with Mother Bill, not just to quieten and destroy the African space that we work, but for also even if they had a way, <laughs> you know, to take me out. <laughs> I hate for use the word for assassinate me. You know, so when I look at that kind of situation, I still believe there are Sierra Leoneans, very good Sierra Leoneans, in government offices, in public institutions, in private institutions, who do not agree. When I went to the IMF and the World Bank meeting, very I met some Sierra Leoneans. 
I come across them in the in their you know when the pastors around some in civil society some of them spoke to me some of them were even afraid to shake my hand because they don't want for make even the news go say they don't meet with me because for them they think say either that will affect the relationship with government or some of the political groups in the country or they do not want to be seen as being friends to me because that gets you implication for them in the country that is the nature of of where we are and it's the danger. So if somebody will not get nothing for do with African Express within a saloon, they're even afraid for me for say he or she is my friend publicly or to be publicly so identified, whether that will make a loss in relationship with certain groups or it's understandable when people decide for make a, a war against a platform like then and now, or even attempt for say they will uh, boycott a media institution that provides space for me. I do not hold, um, as much as I know some of these things, and as much as I have some of the evidence of these things, or much of the evidence of these things, I do not do my work with with holding people, what you call grudge, no. I empathize, I sympathize, uh, and I'm sorry for the people in there. Because I don't see them then trapped in a situation where they have no choices, many of them. They just get to survive. So I look at government accounts, for example, and they see media institutions that receive money, so-called civil society activists that are paid from government accounts. <laughs> you know, so, and sometimes you see them pretending that they are even against government, when in actual fact, when you look at the account, you see them media companies or the groups, then they get uh, 5 million, 10 million, 40 million, 50 million there on so-called consultancy. So if somebody they give you pittance, it's difficult for you to be genuinely opposed to that individual or for you to take a stance against that individual. But in a situation like Sierra Leone, where business, for making you become a successful businessman, a successful, any enterprise that you do for making you succeed in them, you can get a corrupt relationship with many of the political parties and political groups. So it's understandable how some of these corrupt networks that have evolved in the country for the last 60 years um, will be difficult for, you know, on art and fully exposed. And, and, and the kind of work we don't do now, it makes it much more complex because people, we, you know, they expect whether a business, because now you look account, you see them buy enterprises, you see AA enterprises, you see all the small, small company there, whether they get 200 million, 100 million, 50 million, not to like suspicion, direct, direct, the names are inside the account. You don't even need for do analysis, just release no more the bank statement. All man is inside inside. And neighbors go see that somebody with a sabi, school friends go see, hey, so I don't mind they enjoy it. So I've had a situation where I publish bank statements, people they come, eh, so so possible sabi and I won't go to school. And I mean neighbor, hey, so I saw them mind they enjoy it. Then they pretend to be sitting in the hard up. Plenty of those cases. So many of these individuals, even if they do not support Mother Bio, or they do not support the SLPP, or they do not support some of these corrupt politicians, will be, they will not want that kind of government for, for collapse. Not because they, they want that, because that is how, if you collapse, now there is real evidence against many of them. So anybody want to take action now, like a commission of inquiry or a judicial process for, for prosecute these individuals and their associates, and business people, whether they are business, journalists, and other people, would definitely see, say they will be brought in. There is no way you can investigate Fatima Bio tomorrow, you know, bring in all the companies that we don't buy furniture and petrol and other things from. They will either be accomplices or witnesses. Both ways they will be involved in the investigation. So if you say now that we don't receive money like Laiwe, how you expect them one day for? For support a process, we will bring down a government that has given them that, that corrupt money. Even if they don't want that party for the they go find a way for prolong that party day in the one power until they get a replacement that will also guarantee them and their businesses protection from being held accountable. It's a different place. The work that the African Express has done on Sierra Leone is unprecedented, whether somebody wants to acknowledge it or not. It is the first time where government bank accounts, bank statements of who they take money, are, actual names of people, actual names of companies, dates, physical evidence is already 
uh, out in the public domain. You don't need to go any side. And there's more. We have many, many, many more of these details across government from the president of the office of down. So it's a question of for we now what thing we think say important for bring out now with it. Now we know what talk with not to absence of what you will bring out. If we continue for the produce information, so we will continue for the next 10 years. We will produce every day new bank statement, new transaction across government. What you will say no more. You don't already used to the kind of information. But it is not a question of whether this did not happen before, it not happen before. You know, it's a question of at what point in the history of the country in this last 50 years we are a journalist or a media institution has serialized continuously government bank records make accessible to the public. It's no small thing. So we know what we've done to the Slovenian political class, what we've done to friends of the politicians in Slovenia, what we've done to companies partly owned, partly supported by rogue business people. We also know how much our work has affected not just the politicians, but their friends in civil society, in the media, in the professional organizations, in the bar association, all these organizations, right up to the universities, we know. Within the African Express work, don't do. And we also know the difficulty it poses for these people and the, and the implications for that. So I will decide for preface the conversation that way before we able to provide the basis on how to talk about uh, the New York Chance rebuilding as an example of a corruption case that not only challenge we image as a country, but also our sincerity as a country when we come to the question of fighting corruption. That number one. Secondly, it also pose a question whether we actually need an anti-corruption commission ACC or not moving forward. And whether the anti-corruption commission will be built as an institution for help we enforce transparency and accountability now a real now a hindrance to democracy or now an institution with the help we develop with democratic arrangement. And by every indication now looking at the chance we build in case and working backwards right up to 2010, if you like, 10 years before now, we go safely conclude say there's no need for an anti-corruption commission in Sierra Leone because the anti-corruption commission does serve as a weapon in the hands of certain politicians against other politicians in Sierra Leone. Now that this chance rebuilding case able to inform me and not only the chance rebuilding case, but then looking at this incident and say, wait a minute, let me check backwards and go back. The anti-corruption commission start in 2002. In 2012, it become 10 years. In 2022, not 20 years. In the 20 years history of the Anti-Corruption Commission or the Anti-Corruption Commission or ACC, what have we achieved with it? And what have we not achieved with it? Has the ACC become helpful in our effort for get rid of corruption or it don't become a problem? Part of the problems, the institutions we don't create a problem for the governance structure of the country. When we put on a scale, in as much as I was seeing one or two individual uh, commissioners as examples of perhaps people will be one for do good with the commission, I could now safely conclude say the Anti-Corruption Commission, ACC, is not needed in the democratic arrangement of Sierra Leone. We don't need that. Especially the way the ACC don't operate. It don't become a tool in the hands of rogue politicians in the country for destroy with democracy and destroy with multi-party politics. That is what I want to talk about. And I know you talk about that not only within the context of the trend of this chance rebuilding case, but in the context of the history of the commission, at least the history of the commission from the APC leading up to the election of 2012 and leading up to the election of 2018 and leading up to the election of 2023, where they go so now, three cases. And in this case, I'm referring to the, the case, the 2012 case, we're going to deal with, now we're going to do three cases of the exemplary cases. One will be the Timber case, if you want to remember the Timber Gate, Al Jazeera case. The second example will be the Hajj Gate. And the third example that I intend to discuss in this discussion will be the chance rebuilding case. These three cases 
in my own view, and based on the evidence, and my examination of the Anti-Corruption Commission, using these three examples, two cases under the APC and one case under the current SLPP, how these three cases don't affect with institutionalization of democratic practice in Sierra Leone, and what are the implications of all of these three cases in electoral politics, electoral democracy in Sierra Leone. Now this is the subject we have for address today. I know there's plenty of Nagwama talk about the proportional representation and all of that, uh, the PR system, the role of parliamentary democ parliamentarians, how the parliamentarians then compromise the public elections. Yeah, I will talk about that in brief. But I get for then a subject of his own. I get me own measures for take. Because I, I've, I've already, if I remember, since May to June, June, May ending, June, July, August, September, five months I spent talking about the role of parliament for undermining the elections, the state capture, which is now a popular idea in the minds of every Sierra Leonean where they listen. They must use the word state capture. They must use the word voter suppression. These two concepts are now popular phrases in the conversation in Sierra Leone because of our own intervention. Whether somebody wants to recognize that or not, we will take them for myself because we did that together with other colleagues then and now and all the conversations. We popularized that to the extent that even the opposition will not be one way they participate in the voters operation, then create even Twitter handles and all of that operated for duplicate what they try to do, which is okay. We have no problem with people plagiarizing our ideas and using them in the final analysis and conversation with the try for strike. So before we get into this important conversation on corruption, I will ask Una for share um, the um, web link and invite more people into the conversation so that we will have more examine the Anti-Corruption Commission in the context of the chance rebuilding case and in the context of um, the history of the of Anti-Corruption Commission and elections, how the Anti-Corruption Commission now affect the free and fair conduct of elections and fair competitive democracy, democracy about competition. So we know we get state institutions in a way we they say they for help for enhanced democracy because we talk about transparency. It's a fundamental component of democratization. Where, demo where transparency is affected, democracy suffers. Where corruption prevails, democracy don't get no room. It will become choke, choked, suffocated. And that is what we have. And the Anti-Corruption Commission, now one of those institutions who don't contribute to the work to the one. So I want to take this uh, small break and then make myself share the um, conversation before ever I come now for address the substance of we of we conversation. But don't forget what I want to talk about: the New York Chancery building case as one example of how the Anti-Corruption Commission has become a you know a problematic institution, and why we do not need the Anti-Corruption Commission anymore, in my own view. Because politicians in the SLPP, politicians in the APC, weaponized the Anti-Corruption Commission in the process of the election, in the process of elections, and they use three cases: the chance building case as one, and they go back and look at the the Anti-Corruption Commission in rule in the elections of 2018, and the Anti-Corruption in rule in the elections of 2012. Three cases. And then when I always say we can focus no more on what did happen under Mother view, I want for now take a historical con historical perspective into the debate and at least use 10 years, 2010 to 20, okay, 12 years at least, beginning 2010, 2011, three cases, the Timber Gate, the Hajj Gate, and now the chancery building <laughs> scandal. Um, stay tuned. And like I say, this now we our usual 
discussion, the frontline show. So I'm taking a small break and then we will come back. We're gonna share the conversation. Me said they take me, make a share on my Facebook page and other place so people go get access to the conversation. <laughs> Okay. Thank you very much for, to everyone. Uh, may we continue for share and invite more people into this regular Saturday meeting. As, as, I, as I mentioned just now, we did try for, you know, draw people's attention to how the Anti-Corruption Commission or ACC, Anti-Corruption Commission as in the call and asylum, don't become an institution that um, its usefulness when it comes to the fight against corruption has to be now questioned. And, and part, of, part, of the, part of the reasons why um, we decide to hold this conversation, now because, as, as I say, for, you know, throughout last week, if I remember, this early um, October, was it October 10? I was in New York. We go to New York. If I if I not remember, if I not forget, that was October 10. But from the whole week of October 10 to October 13, we've been there in New York. Basically, they examine the 
which are called the dilapidated building, the abandoned building of the New York Chancery, um, the, 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 the building we supposed for house we ambassador um, and other diplomatic official, officials and who we can send at the United Nations for representative. And if you remember, I can go back to the, to the website of the African Express, but precisely in May 2021, now, the day this story um, emerged, the, the chance we build in, you know, scandal, basically the, the fact that money would have been sent for build the Saloon Embassy in New York, to serve with diplomatic officials supposed for day, that the building not complete, and that the diplomats that will be sending, they don't um, chop the money, and they don't run away, they don't let the building in the condition in which you've been there. So the first time when this story came at the public domain, now being May 25, 2021. And on May 25, 2021, nine Sierra Leone and them read a publication from the African Express where it talks say, despite over $4.6 million, where the Mother Bureau administration transfer in 2019, that despite the fact that they take five, nearly $5 million, then send them to Canada, New York, for saying they can renovate with embassy building, that the building not complete, and that they don't abandon the place. And the contractor will have been paid for doing the construction, don't also, um, will have been saying pay for, for undertake the construction, don't abandon the building, they don't left them, they don't go. So we publish, we not only publish this, we show evidence of the transactions. And we say the money we then send in New York, they send them between May 24, 2019 and September 24, 2019. And May 27, in fact, we show how all the transfer that happened, money that was wired into um, an account owned by a company called Etixar, seven billion six hundred and fifty-five uh, million eight hundred and forty-five thousand nine hundred forty-six Leon sixty cent, and we also show in June, say um, the the swift payment and then transfer money also come to New York, we are equally seven billion. 665,845,933 Leon 49 cent. This was in 13 June. Transaction ID, when I go to the African Express, we'll see the transaction ID. You know, the first transaction ID was FT 191475390. The second one, FT 1916454098. So for those of you who do not, who perhaps are not familiar with transaction codes, when you look at the bank statement, you see uh, FT is basically a fund transfer. That is the abbreviation. So the fund transfer code is there, whereas a TT basically now like teller transaction. Who say you take, you go to that before the person at the counter, you get either a check or some kind of a withdrawal authorization. The person process the payment and give you. So when you look at the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs account, where we publish the details from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation transactions between May 24, 2019 and September 24, 2019, we, we highlight in that bank statement the transactions that we have to do the money that we got for do the with the chance we building. The first transfer was a transaction of 7.6 billion. And at the time, if you look 2019, almost done and nearly, if you check the bank exchange rate at the time, you're talking about nearly eight hundred thousand dollars or nine hundred thousand dollars, depending on what the central bank was calculating as their foreign exchange. Um, this is not the street exchange rate too. So this money was paid directly into the account of a company called Etixal. 
and I don't know really, those of the people that we really go to court every day since this matter start don't already um, hear about this ethics sale, Ali Kaba, and all of that. Then we see back, we look at the statement on the 13th of June 2019, we see the other fund transfer, the other transfer, in fact, it's a swift payment that was wired out of the bank to New York, to the Australian Embassy account in New York. It did, if you really look at the details, it tells you a payment in favor of Sierra Leone, you know, Sierra Leone UN delegation New York in reference of renovation of the Chancery Building in New York, USA. This was in 2019. So when you go down the statement again, you find out, you see the other subsequent transactions that will happen equally so in September. In fact, the other, the other transaction was 31st July, 2019. Insert the transfer code or the transaction code was FT1921205234. And this also, another 2 billion, 500 million, 2.5 billion, the same thing with a transfer in respect of this uh, chance rebuilding. Then the next transfer will happen on the 16th of August, 2019. And this also, the fund transfer transaction code is FT1922864450. This one again, Inga for do with 9.3 billion, 9 billion, 330 million. Also in respect of the same embassy building. Then on the 5th of September 2019, you get another swift payment and transfer order money again in Canada, New York. This one again, the transaction code is FT1924808290. Payment in favor of Sierra Leone UN delegation in reference of renovation of the Chancery Building in New York by order of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation. And this is the amount, the 9 billion. 329 million, 999,975 million and 14 cents. So this, you see, I say it is $1 million, exact precise amount, and then said, this was on the 5th of September, 2019. So all of these transactions, when you calculate everything, is sum up to, um, little above $4.6 million, over $4.6 million. And again, as I already did, they were read, all of this happened between May to September 2019. Now the question is, who was in power around May to September 2019? The answer is simple. Now, the government of Julius Madabio, it was, it had already been in office from April 2018 to April 2019, a one year. The money we are talking about so now, the transaction begin towards almost the end of May. Then about one year, one month after we Madabio don't kind of power. At this time, Julius Madabio, we don't already attend the first UN General Assembly meeting. The first UN General Assembly meeting where Madabio attend was in September 2018. I get also the transactions in terms of almost the president spent for current UN General Assembly in 2018. We don't publish it. I want, if anybody did not where they listen to this conversation, one make I go back and read almost Madabio been spent with and come at the UN General Assembly meeting in June. 28. I will show you that all delegation, including the people who are going to be shipped for Canada. Remember that time? Eh? And only at that time. At the time, we also get a list of each and every member of the delegation, that the largest delegation we might have your lead. We might have your kind of power. The first thing they do, then they release list of each and every delegation force. The first people they take going to London, then release delegation. Other trip in Africa 2018 and do that. When you go to China, this was around August to September 2018. When I remember when we go to China, I wear that old Chinese suit. We then Chinese, they know they wear again. The Mao, we call it the Mao Zedong suit. Now you wear. First visit to China. 
Now, after we come that trip to China, and the first thing that we the government refused to publish the list of delegations, the list of delegation members, it started with the first trip that Madame took to China because many of the people included in that on that trip we are not part of government, including Musa Tarawali was part of that de delegation. In fact, going to China, they were supposed to take business people. I know of a businessman in Sierra Leone who had submitted his passport, was asked to submit a passport. Genuine businessman, we don't trade, they get hotels, get uh, stationary printing, and all of this. I don't name the name now, but some of you who are aware will know. This individual was asked to submit his passport, everything, so at the last minute they said they're good, and then replace him with Musa Tarawali at the time. In fact, if you go check my Facebook page, you find out, say, I wrote an article and a Facebook comment on that. Say, why would I hide the delegation list? And since that time to now, we have never seen a travel list by the president, listing the amount of people who might have been travel with ever since. Why are the references very important? Because the timeline is important for the examination of the crime in question and the details of the case. Before I come about now, I want to lay this premise so we will examine whether the anti-corruption is useful or useless and whether the anti-corruption commission is needed or needless and whether the anti-corruption commission now a proper democratic institution will we need or now a problematic democratic institution, a problematic institution that is now problematic for our democracy. And that make it provide this. So in September, the president was at the United Nations in 2018. And remember, after we returned September, we did the UN General Assembly done 2018. At that time, we might have come, you go to California, you come to you go to Virginia, you come to you go to DC, they talk to them, they say, I don't come to America, now I don't come. Just like Usufia landed in London. So it was an important trip, not just for Sierra Leone, but for the president itself. Because we don't tell you come to America, we don't apply for visa, then they don't even get to America. That was a campaign message of the APC that mother would not vote anybody when they travel to America. You know, they go to America. The APC and SLPP spent a lot of time leading up to 2012, up to 2018, but talks to mother view, you know, for elect time because you know they you know they go to America and they travel America. He only showed up in America after he became president. So for Mother Bio, the presidency was important because he also able to make it fulfill a personal desire, which is a desire to visit America, which he has been trying to do to come to the United States for many years after he left here and was unable to do so. When he visit, he go visit Virginia. He went to the gravesite where, you know, go pay homage to a mamai grave and all. So his America or United States visit in 2020 was significant for Madabio. Very important. It's his first time in the United States after a very long time. And one problem that was used as a criteria to assess his suitability for the presidency. So which means Madabi only able to come to America because he is served as president of the country because of diplomatic, the diplomatic relevance of serving as the head of state and president of, a, of an independent country, a sovereign country. So he was not granted the permission to come to the United States as an individual Madabi, but like how we can go and apply for visa or anybody can apply for visa and come to America as a citizen of the world, a citizen from coming from a different country. No. He came not as Madabio, but as president of Sierra Leone. Incidentally, the president of Sierra Leone is called Julius Madabio. Important to talk about this because it deals with diplomacy, the importance of diplomatic relations, the importance of the respect attached to diplomacy. And we are talking about a diplomatic embarrassment, which is what I need to underline. So if Madabio no say, Coming to America is very important to him. The United States is very important to him personally. Then he arrived in America in 2018. He must have known that there was a lingering problem left by the APC. We're going to deal with the diplomatic presence of Sierra Leone in the United States 
especially so in the United Nations. The purpose of Madabi in first come in America, not to forget visit the president of America. He was not coming to the United States because of just the, because of a bilateral relationship between Sierra Leone and America, and he was invited to attend a U.S. meeting. No, he was coming to America on the basis of Sierra Leone's membership of the United Nations, the UN General Assembly meeting. Now, the reason we make America a visa for the first time after many times, we have been refusal for America. So, which means the Mother Bill's first visit to the United States is directly, directly connected to with presence as a country at the United Nations. So, if with presence at the United Nations has been affected by this shabby building corruption with the APC left behind, especially so one that was supposedly created by his main contender in 2018, somebody who accused him on stage of having stolen money for the future we serve as head of state as a junta leader. Then, and if they look for all kind of way for put case in Amanda Bill in head, I mean, in uh, Samura Kamara in head since he took power. Because when Amanda Bill took power, the first 12 months, the principal focus of the government was to investigate the previous other officials of the government. Anes Kuruma, uh, every other possible serve in APC was subject of multiple investigations. These include the governance transition report, GTT report. The second thing include the uh, commission of inquiry. The other thing include a forensic audit carried out by the audit service led by Lara Telopias in association with other international people who were brought into the country to assist in the inspection of corruption. So there was no way the corruption of the Saloon Chancery building, if it was a corruption that really implicated the APC politicians who have served, key politicians who don't serve under Anes Kuruma, not for me not become one of the primary things they waited for use, waited for mention. There is nowhere in the GTT report, in the COI, Commission of Inquiry Proceedings and in the white paper where the chance revealed in case, as we have it, was ever mentioned. Never. Even when Madabu visited the United Nations and went back home, you find out, say, from where the president visited the United Nations, 2018, he returned. The story of the chance revealed in case, now Madabu comes September, 2018, he attends the General Assembly, he returns alone, October, you don't, in September, return. Now we get October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. Eight months. It took eight months to 2019 when they begin send May, then they begin send money. So the SLPP government of Madabu started transferring money to New York to renovate and construct two additional floors of the Chancery building. Eight months after the president in visit one to the United Nations. And again, I repeat, the only reason why the United States issued a visa to Julius Madabio after they refused him for many years a visa to visit as an individual was because he was coming to the United Nations in 2018, in September. So if the corruption of the Chancery building had existed, and was there was a problem, an embarrassment at the United Nations for Sierra Leone in New York, and an embarrassment left behind by Anes Kuruma and Samura Kamara and the APC, it would have become a subject of an investigation on the very day when Madabio took power or after his visit to the United Nations in 2018. But no, the chance of building case nor ever become part of any subject of an inquiry, any investigation by the Anti-Corruption Commission, none up to the point where until eight months after Malawi visit, they started sending money to New York. Up to the point of the second General Assembly meeting in 2019 where Malawi came now America, money was still being sent 
I don't need to, I think up to uh, 2019, September, which was on the eve of the second general assembly meeting with Madame Bukam 2019. Then we transfer money in New York. Okay? For attend, for build this embassy, 2019. So which means one year later, after Madame first visit to the United Nations, leading up to his second visit to the United Nations, money was still transferred from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Bank of Sierra Leone, to New York for renovate the chance rebuilding and build. And at that time, by the time we might have built the second visit in 2019, Sierra Leone, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the Central Bank, they had already transferred over $4.6 million to New York in the name of constructing an embassy. And Madabu visited New York again in September 2019 and returned to Sierra Leone and not mentioned the UN chance rebuilding, the mission building in New York. I want to listen to this time sequence. I'm not going into the details how this case was developed. I relay this uh, uh, story. The reason why I decided to talk about this is because I have observed since we published this story how crooked journalists, crooked civil society, crooked lawyers, and crooked politicians in association with the crooked anti-corruption commission and other people were associated with them, people that are outside of the country, Sierra Leoneans, who you hold in high esteem, decide to cook up evidence just for undermining with democracy and multi-party politics. And by the way, this is not a defense for any politician. It is a question of speaking truth to power. It is my responsibility as a journalist who investigated this story, who led the team of people who investigated this story, who published and brought this story to light, to also lay the truth bare as it is. So even if many of you are angry or happy, that is not my concern. My concern is to explain exactly the basis of the story, how we arrive, how we arrive. So, so again, I don't tell you now. Um, Mother Bill's visit to the United States always, always, therefore, do with his coming to the United Nations General Assembly, which means if anything, self will not, Mother Bill will not get anything to be concerned about, that the image of Sierra Leone at the United Nations, that are two of make as a priority. The image of Sierra Leone at the United Nations for include the status of we embassy building. Now in 2018, he visit the chance of building case not come up, but there was still a commission of inquiry going on. In 2019, the president visited again. Around 2019, by the time he visited the second visit, $4.6 million has already been transferred to New York. Now in 2020, the time of COVID, the president of visited the United Nations, so, but he visited Lebanon, September, around the same time we for being calm, August, September, around the same time we for calm in, in New York, he took a trip to Lebanon. We said we don't show that he took cash. That alone cost me over a million dollars. Now, when he returned from Lebanon, he go in a salon, October 2020, then the president launched the so-called Commission of Inquiry report officially. This was three years after a visit at the United Nations. A visit for September 2018, September 2019, September 2020, three years. When Madabu returned from, from Lebanon, the first way he talks say he did launch the Commission of Inquiry and the Corruption Fight, he, he reiterate in determination to go after APC, the Commission of Inquiry report. Now go watch the video TBSA. It's a fight that we must win. He invited the Israel Union for joining in the fight. This was October 2020. It was already three years after Madame Bill first came to New York. Even on that day, the president made no mention of the New York Chancery building, made no mention of the fact that over four, nearly $5 million has been transferred to New York and that the building in question housing the, diplomat, the diplomats Australia and the United Nations had been abandoned. 
and that it was in the dilapidated state. There is no way Mother Bureau will come at the United Nations and not know say that problem they exist if it was a problem that was there that was created by APC. In fact, we don't make a number one. We don't even see, I will come to that one, the effort for fair evidence on stories that they don't have, including the uh, Serra Rutile case. I will come to that. Because I get examples of where journalists had come to me to talk to me about, hey, we want me to look into this uh, Serra Rutile thing, if evidence did. We have a separate conversation. Make I just focus on this one. So we find out that in three years after the president go all about, they launched the report in October. After October, which happened, they announced the report. They went to McKinney to supposedly arrest or invite ACC saying to go visit an Eskoma for interview. The chance rebuilding case was never part of the subject of the discussion. In their cases against Samura Kamara, the chance rebuilding case was never part of their conversation. In their case against um, Kelfala Mara, who they've just let out of the COI, who served briefly in the Foreign Affairs Ministry, the chance rebuilding case was never part of the discussion. That was three years. Every civil society organization, when when they, when ACC said the Goma Keni, the Soko Bana, they all come out, all Jay Soko Bana, all kind devil come on ado, police or devil all mix up and box up. Nobody no mentioned the chance rebuilding case, including the civil society people, them, the lawyer, them, and the one they were hiding in a corner. Former employees of the Anti Corruption Commission and their friends in Freetown, hidden in civil society and the media, never mentioned the New York chance rebuilding case. This was in October 2020. November. 2020, the New York Chancery Building case never came up. December 2020, nobody mentioned the New York Chancery Building case. January, nobody mentioned it. Right up to 2021, nobody no mentioned it. The first time the New York Chancery Building case became a subject of conversation was on May 25, 2020, 2021. When the African Express published the first article where it said diplomatic mission fails to complete renovation despite transfers of, of you know the millions of dollars what we talk about. That was um, on May 25. Okay. On May 20, on June 25, we published the second article on the New York Chance Rebuilding. Which I will say, Australian risk legal default on incomplete on com incomplete renovation of diplomatic mission. So what we can find out again, as it, as we transfer this money, not say the president will be aware of this problem. The problem we don't already fester on, and not only the problem they go on, but also that pressure was already on the Mother Bio government because of the destruction that the incomplete renovation started around 2021. The applications 2020, then the granted 2021 had already uh, stalled. And the neighborhood and now the tribe can go to the embassy in a court because the renovations don't affect the building. And when I see the video that now I make um, last week, three videos, I have videos of even of the interior of the building who's like a crutch and now a rata now it's too embarrassing in fact my some of my colleagues say make we when i go to the new york times building I, I personally apologize to the neighbors of we embassy i said do ya i know say this is so hard to and i came here for news i don't claim that the rooftop of the building i don't talk to the neighbors talk to the lawyers with the represented neighbors there get discussion with the other parties to the case and get an, uh, an understanding one year later. I, she said, I, I felt ashamed as a Sierra Leonean. So I got to tell her, say, you know, this is, uh, this epitomizes the recklessness of the kind of uh, politicians who are in charge of our country, but it does not characterize who we are as citizens coming from that country. 
I said, Tuna, see me? He said, yes. I said, how do you see my approach? I said, no, you look different. I said, well, not to me, no more look different. No. Many of my other Sierra Leoneans who look like me, ordinary people, are like, they are, they are you know, they are like this. They are, they are very embarrassed by this situation. I said, the one day we chief, this chief will cause this problem. They are a handful, they not pass one more, no rest. I said, so do you, when I not look this situation, when I enter on a Sierra Leone, I think say, na so we turn. I told them that. I told them that. Why? Because it is shameful, embarrassing to look at. We call the in fact, oh, they make the video. Somebody was passing by. He stopped. We put them, we get the video of them. You know, some of the people in the past. One of them stopped and asked me about the building. We talk. In fact, I said, this building is for just auction. He said, look at an embarrassment in this area. So this is somebody, just regular person passing. We get another video. We did not, we decided not to put that because there was some comments made that we, we felt very funny. We said shame self with the kind of comment where this, uh, what you call passerby, they wanted to pass no more way. Me to make video, they talk with a surprise. He said, stop and make a comment. We have those. But for me, I not lost sight of what they talk about. I don't already tell you now how this New York Times rebuilding was already the, you know, so if not be APC problem, the question is why did Mother Bill visit New York in 2018, 2019, and up to 2020, none of the SLPP politicians, their supporters, none of them made mention of the chance rebuilding case and the fact that Samura Kamara been on TV this morning, don't go to the embassy or left so. There be some people that they just decide to keep her. They're not talking until we African Express talk her. No. No. The SLPP has, the Mother Bureau regime has put has gone after, well, these people decided to bring the mayor of Freetown to parliament for interrogator an uh, issue around what they call 200 million loans. Now imagine if they had evidence of a case like this, and not say no, no, say the embassy building was abandoned, was in dilapidated state. No, that, that is why they transferred money in 2019. Up to 2020, they, they transferred money. And up to now, as I tell them, they transfer money back to the embassy for that. I can't read transaction details of money in the kind of the embassy they, up to now. And you have, uh, you know, a case in court where the people who transferred this money in 2019 from Freetown, the people who received the money in Freetown, who recommended the transfer of this money, including the president, are not held for this crime. Instead, they have put in court one politician, Samura Kamara, in court, together with other junior ranking officials, when they use no more for justified say that this body only high profile person there as a minister in the past was the one in the past government who was out of office in 2018. Who uh, had no business with the transaction, so we don't read so. So if really this case was about him and his own corruption, why did he not be appear in all the report there? So this is the question we have to be, we have to be very honest as a country. We can disagree with people. We can disagree and not like anybody and hate anybody, if you want to use the word hate, the strong word hate. But your opposition to an individual a group or anything should not prevent you from being able to recognize truth, to recognize falsehood, and to be able to say it. You know, they reduce you. You know, they change your position regarding what you think about a particular group of people. That is, at least for me, that is the principle. So, um, if the New York Times rebuilding case was actually one that implicated the APC, and 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 mother view knew it that is, and there was no way if that thing didn't have an APC problem and Samura Kamara then left her and Alex Kumara be left that problem there. With Mother View Canada New York, the first time you know what I said, Canada New York the first time before all learn about that in 2018. Or if you know in 2018, we can 2019, if you don't know if we but why would the rent why would I can't the rent now in Uganda building? Because you must have a report. He must have had a discussion with the ambassador, with the people there. 
But no. And not only that, the president was aware that the, the New York mission was already sued to court, was about to be taken to court because diplomatic engagements don't happen. In fact, let me to say it here. For hide the embarrassment, that is why the president decided to reshuffle by me, by tell we said we not begin investigate. We learn about this situation in January 2021. We would investigate Madabio in government. We don't because when I remember October when they launched the um, Commission of Inquiry report after Madabio come more. Uh, Belgium, um, come on, Lebanon, we don't take that $1 million in return. That was when we started talking about the timber story. By January 2021, at the time we published the money the president spent Christmas, we published almost a cargo Lebanon, then we published Fatima View in, 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 in expenditure. This was in, in January and February of 2021. We published David Francis as chief minister in corruption. Palm the story go BBC. Within that be the defense of the Anti-Corruption Commission when we publish Fatima Bill in, in story. The first thing we then say, we'll talk about first the president they spend X amount of money. Which time we begin to say, and as Kumar they mean they spend the same thing, and as they spend more than that one So they always had a defense referencing the corruption of the APC as an as a, an excuse for Madam Bill's own frivolous spending and theft of public money. So if we know about this story. Since Amura Kamara and Anes Kumara, they left this embarrassing situation. They had stolen money meant for the embassy in New York. They for not mention that, either in the commission or who will begin publish. They for not mention that. They never did. They never mentioned that because it wasn't an APC problem. Not to say that no, it was not an APC problem and still is not a problem created, but these particular transactions are not. It was never part of any inquiry, not because because if you transfer money in 2019, when the Commission of Inquiry been to go on in 2018, 2019, you don't come to New York, you don't go, you don't mention that, that means that there was no problem with that project. Even if there was the comment for the sake of argument, say the team did not start on the APC time, it means there was no problem there. Because if there was any problem, the problem will have been raised by the inquiries. It will not be part of the cases. May, most trivial thing that don't in the case there, we don't include in cases, something 200 million, 100 million. We don't get a group of artists where they don't, we'll say for 60 million. We don't get that kind of thing. Part of the, when I read the GTT report, when I read the COI report, things about 30 million all day inside. How can, if that one day there's a mean, small amount and minimal things then they inside, how about a case of millions of dollars as we're, as we're talking about? And like I say, the only evidence that's out in the public domain regarding money for the chance we're building are the evidence we publish. The Anti-Corruption Commission not ever published. No journalist never published any amount of money we then transfer to New York before 2019. Ask them in a show now. That is to that is beside the fact that they never mentioned this issue. And at the time they were they made a fed for cover the story because now the New York City government, the New York State government now, the New York Department of Buildings and all the agencies in New York don't tire for negotiate with the embassy now. The neighbor they don't do diplomatic effort, then they don't tire. They don't decide to say you know in the last resort. The, 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 the woman, the Harveys, I spoke to the family, the Harveys, the neighbors. They, they not only let me say that, I claim go right now the roof when I see the video. And I spoke to them and they told me they held meetings with Ali Kaba. They discussed Ali Kaba. Even in the court papers, they mentioned it with them file. They affidavit with them file. He didn't, he didn't have a website to publish it. They said they try all kinds of diplomatic. They're not even supposed to do that. They say, even where the embassy people they begin saying they make their life for construct. Then both they want to see on top of themselves, so they put her on top, they don't even seek permission from them. Lawless people then. We will come to the contractor side. I just want to lay the premise for sure when I say the dishonesty, the anti corruption commission, a useless organization. And not only start now under Madabu, the same politicians that will decide for help Madabu for use this particular case against the young opposition people, then we don't use the anti corruption commission way back in 2012. 
leading up to 2011, leading up to 2012, when he came to Timber Gate, and they don't use them back in 2018 with the Hajj Gate leading up to the elections of 2018. Now the same politician at the back in the opposition hiding behind Madabio together with Madabio, they use the same anti-corruption commission in the interest of promoting their own agenda in the elections of 2023. We cannot have democratic institutions being weaponized in the interest of public elections. No, impossible. We cannot build a society through that way. And it hurts not just the democracy, but even the quality of governance and the stability of the country. Now that is the problem. That is the most annoying part. Forget about the disgrace, international disgrace. Now, in 2021, when we begin publish now, show Madabi in travel expenditure, then defend the travel expenditure, say, let's go, maybe they spend past two. They don't mention the chance review bill. But in, in that defense, again, not ever show you, nobody, not ever publish how much the previous president with all his travels spent in public funds. The best way for, for argue against the African press is to publish details. Now, for published bank statement for say, okay, you say, uh, Anas Koroma, you say, Madam, you don't go to Lebanon, you don't go to over $1 million. Well, Anas Koroma, we go to Israel one time, we go kiss the stone, like Israel or a wall, I don't know how they call it. He said, we spend $2 million, look at the $2 million. That's how you do it. You talk, say, like Madam Yokomona, you talk, say, and it's Kuruma, we go left dead in Japan. We say, no lie. No lie, they lie. You can take over 200,000 and pay for you. We show the, we not only say they lie, we show the document there. And we say, no, we don't get no problem with, with, with Japan. We don't only show the problem, we show also the history of all the people who don't visit Sierra Leone and Japan back and forth for the last 30 years. Yeah, yeah. Nobody never talk about the issue. That is how you challenge evidence. People can't say, oh, a lie. No, you don't. I mean, we are not used for telling people a lie. People, people, you, I mean, you do not expect that Sierra are fools. So when you, a politician, minister, or, or president, you talk in a lie, that means, say, uh, you, and you know, for that, people go, people supposed to believe you because you're not, you're not a member of parliament. No. So, they don't ever provide evidence for what they're talking about. We also publish, say, Fatima Biyun, and the false possible they don't receive. Bank statements and they say, what did the anti-corruption say? They say, see, Akuruma, I mean, they receive the same thing. They, they investigate see, Akuruma. But when you check, anti-corruption provide the result of the investigation. But you ask the former first lady, she was never interviewed. Nobody who worked at the office of the former first lady was ever interviewed by the anti-corruption commission. How did they arrive at their conclusion then? Say, ah, that's what didn't happen. And nobody in the opposition has ever questioned the Anti-Corruption Commission regarding their uh, investigation. I mean, nobody in Parliament has bothered to investigate and question the Anti-Corruption Commission and their conclusion and their findings. And nobody in Sierra Leone has ever presented, really, independent, apart from what the other service report, no institution, journalist, or media, or has published details of corruption of the Madabio government than we have done. In fact, we are the only institution or organization or group of people who have been looking and inspecting and following public expenditure, frivolous spending, and misuse and theft of public funds in Sierra Leone under Madabio. No one, no one has done that. In fact, what we have seen is an effort by the media by other institutions, including civil society and other public institutions, and including opposition members of parliament, to water down the evidence that we have produced and published. But the very opposition politicians who are challenging the African press, undermining what we are doing, have never challenged the accusation or the use of so called corruption in the past to normalize and defend the matter of corruption. They're not even doing When Madabi will go on a public radio and TV in a salon for two days and talk, say, and the school might be left dead in a Japan, in good day for go pay dead, they're not being through another. No politician in a salon, including Cherry Koko, the members of parliament, Lahai Marade, everybody in the party, not say one word against that. You know, by the day they by the time the day they done, the president go on a kissy for go 
spread that lie. They, they did a radio station, Justice FM. They talk, they invited the commodity rich in the state law. You don't publish an article showing a lie, they lie. In fact, the media and business people were sponsoring a campaign to help the president defend himself against the corruption stories and evidence that we were publishing. And this, that the town hall will be hold, nah, uh, now, no, we just had this hotel in name, in fact. If anybody remember the hotel in name for, for writer for winner the comment. But when I remember that town hall in the whole April, sponsored by Sarah I, that's what they call her Sarah I, Basita Michael, then, then, then uh, a media institution. They hosted the town hall for the president, in which the president was saying he did celebrating three years in office. But the entire celebration was to present lies. The president did a lie. Number one, he began. He go to ninety eight point one, go to SLP, he go to all the media institutions. The botox say in the travel for repairs alone, he made even go pay that in Japan. None of them not challenge the statement. The event at the town hall was moderated by Umaru Fufana. Now, now in, during that event, the, the president talks say he did try for use proportional representation, and the hope say Umaru then go help out for canvas people, like, whether a joke or a serious or serious. But he made that statement. Right in the public space. We all remember that. So that was that event itself was an effort for help mother view for defending self. And all the people who were involved in organizing that event, whether they are journalists, civil society, media, whatever you call them, that people them we try for help the we participate in that effort for help mother view and the government for reply to the African Express and the corruption evidence that we are publishing. But we show say the president the lie. We don't only say the lie, we show evidence say the lie. Since then, no journalist in the salon, no civil society, no lawyer, we in an APC or opposition or independent person self say anything, able challenge. In fact, I mean, the hope say we don't get evidence for counter the president's statement. But we don't take 24 hours. Eh? We finish with that argument day. quick. So the first attempt of the opposition and civil society and journalists and all the interest groups in the country for help mother view from parliament and outside of parliament for help mother view for defending itself against the corruption of the African Express failed in April 2021. After that one, then we sit down, we watch yourself now, face to face. Yeah. Now we got to learn, even the rehearsals for that event that they, they happened uh, days before. In fact, what is happening? What is know about understand the fact that when they were preparing for that event, we intelligence, we don't know say they prepare for put mother view out. Because by this time, anti-corruption not try for defend the first lady, the noble, Minister of Information not try, State House Communication, all my way long time for challenge African press for the shows in a lie, they lie. Chief Minister issue press release, which buff. Fatima Bill come out, he defend her worse. So it's oh, what you for do now. The president says, come on, I made the president come on using image now for the friend. So when the journalists then and you meet the people, they prepare. We said we don't know say they can. So we prepare the the basically the content of the rehearsal. We already know what they can talk, what they lie with they can lie. How them plan for defend themselves. So we wait as a duo, we just release spam the information. We know it is sleeps at 24 hours. That will tell you so we don't know say they do it. Because it will take a journalist, if you're not being prepared, it will take you uh Weeks or months for investigate for those if you are to say the president will go to Japan, if you left the, you know, it will take you time for no that day, for no that, and begin find out and find the document, find the evidence. But because we don't know, say, the a plan will be to go on, we investigation will intel, don't tell we say that the plan, we know what in and how they plan, and how they put in a plan for use. So we prepare ourselves in response to the exact thing we want of Japan. We keep the evidence. We know they should say the event will be go for. Now, been the an annual meeting with the Japan government, the whole, with an invited one, over 150 heads of states. Now, Japan pay, we do not know that. We don't also find the evidence of the relationship between Japan and Sierra Leone for 30 years, we don't get that. We know the last person we didn't go to Japan, Ali Kaba, we, you know, we get all this documentary evidence for Kipa. Then we don't also look at the Bank of Saloon records we'll be get again. We don't know, say, apart from the pay we pay for it, we go to over $200,000 here in Fatima. We don't know this also, we keep her, we wait. So as the journalists that we've been thinking saying they do stamp in fact, what do we wait for to win? Two days, the first day, he can't talk to wait. The second day, that the not succeed. In fact, the journalists will declare for him because 
The event, I think, was happening on a Friday, the town hall. So they begin Wednesday, they call the president to go first night. The president to the uh, information minister, the education minister, they all go. That was then, I think, have been DSTI. Uh, but Shenge, Rado, the president, you know, four of them were on, on, on SLBC in the morning. They talk about, hey, now they life us. I was going wait. May repeat that. Fine, may I go inside, may I go inside. Fine. You know, it's just like we, like we, the fight for you set an ambush. You wait for the opponent to come inside. Well, inside, inside you, inside you flank. You don't, you don't, you don't build the circle. So you begin enter. So we tell us, when I wait, my life fine. So he do SLBC, he come out he go AYV. Okay, they will, they will wait. Then from there, the following day, Thursday, I think the thing's sweet, and she said, we'll not reply. We'll wait for us. So Thursday morning, and then you wake up, bam. You go now 98.1, you come on, you go Star TV, you work at all, they go right up to Eastern. So the journalists, they will be they prepared. They're not beginning to like, oh, this is a democratic president, very transparent. You don't subject yourself to media scrutiny. The president work at a radio station. So I call some of the journalists and say, hey, almost, they say, some side left 10 million, some side left 2 million, and the radio station will go interview after the interview. The dropper. We even got to know that some of the questions sent to this radio station were written out by, by, by State House. So they rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed. Look at the act drama. So they begin seeing that they were hoping that this live way lies. So all my key questions are the president of African Express and I lie. So yeah, somebody just like been to money. Exactly. I've been to money, then they hold the um, the town hall. So after the been to money April event, what we don't see now say now you go to the town hall now. They were they were jubilating, they were not happy. Say by the time they go, they don't build this momentum that the media so they go to the town hall, they could just crown everything over. Then that would be the end of African Express and publications and corruption. The president, after all, the president need for the worker, the government to pay for her. So I remember. As in the dawn, the Thursday, before they go Friday, where they come on, it's there, they can. We said just release the article. By the time the president written a state lodge, this is around 8 o'clock salon time. The article does slam. Bam. All say, yay. All the small, small journalists will be the talk now. Civil society will be done, where they celebrate. All say, quiet. The whole social media space. Yay, yay. President don't lie. He not only lie, do the evidence say he don't lie. Do the money we take. You know, when I, when I remember these stories, in fact, some of the APC people that we've been there, we've been there behind, we the hope we've been participating in this planning secretly. Who, you know, now we get to learn about it. We are shocked. Yeah. Because they could not defend their own political party. They could not defend their own former president and their party. By this time, they're not been overthrown as Kroma and the old executive. And Eskroma was still chairman and leader. Jan Sane was secretary general and you know all this. I know the position there. They were all the parliamentary leaders, everybody been there. At this time, their party is under siege. Nobody. But we, not to APC, we defend. We, just, we are just defending truth. We just believe, say, every government should be held to account. We did it with Anes Kuruma. In fact, by April, if I go look at African Express, in April 20, um, 2017, yeah, I published an article where I also been saying Anes Kuruma lie. When he gave a, press, a, a speech to say, uh, they don't build three universities. I said, no, you know, we change the name of a college, you call it a university, you say, don't build a university. I wrote that article, it is on the website. So now two, two kind of lie. Self-praise, but it's not about in a money business, thief. So when we challenge him the on the question of truth, say so don't lie to the country, we are basically calling to question his role as a fountain of honor hmm? of the Republic of Sierra Leone. You should not lie. If you don't thief money, say yes, I use our spend and this and this. But you know who lie. So the president did not only lie in front of the world about his travel expenditure in an effort to, to dismiss the African Express, but his allies in the opposition and the civil society and the media and the opposition largely in parliament. We are defeated for the first time in April 2019. When I don't think there's a chance to build in case at the time of lay, still I talk about, but I just want to show no more. What is not happening up to us how we reach? This was April 2021. At this time, even when they make this lie about the hotel bill for defend Madabio, 
They don't make the lie about the chance rebuilding case. And the money about hotel bill is far less small than over nearly $5 million of chance to build the case. So if the president was aware that Samura Kamara and Anesco Madden the home thief all that money for the chance to build the case, they're not even bother for making this lie about Japan force for defend themselves and cover up the corruption of the government. The young supporters and people are within the opposition and other one way hide outside with the type of help this government for staying in power and cover up the corruption. Not for them to go to that extent for rehearse and build lie them, make lie them, difficult lie. For lie about corruption, for defend my view, for lie by the opposition on corruption for defend themselves. They're not gonna do that. Because the chance of building case would have been the main thing we never focus on long since. Because by every indication, we now got to know the whole obstacle of my view in the opposition that the Anaskoma influence. And not only Anaskoma influence, the, he fears the potential of defeat by Samura Kamara, which by extension would mean the influence of the old guards of the APC. And these are the people that we don't, we don't characterize as Anyampi, Tifmande, criminals. So you don't criminalize the public service of these individuals without showing any evidence. So his fear is if he why I can't have power, that's a problem for him. And the potential of Samura Kamara for defeat Madabu, it don't become much more real today. We can see the possibility of Samura Kamara defeating Madabu in an election more than we saw the possibility of Madabu becoming president in 2018. Fact. Anybody who know how to recognize this, I possibly not just want to be honest to your own conscience, but we have observed the politics of Sierra Leone for the last 20 years, at least for me. Beginning at least from Tijan Kaba, before Anes Kuma became president, he was opposition. We get articles written and covered him. We saw him coming to, come to power in 2007. We knew by 2004, after the local council election of 2004, we know say APC was heading to power. We wrote about it. We also saw that at least it would be difficult for APC to uh, remain in power after 2018. But the, the only the possibilities what we see for Madam Bill becoming president in 2018, based on the, our analysis of the of the political landscape, was narrower. The possibility of Madam Bill being defeated in 2023 is more obvious today than what than the possibility of him, than the possibility we saw that he was going to be president in 2018. It's easy for me to see Madam Bill in defeat next year than we saw his coming to power in 2018. This even the SLPP people then said plenty of them in believe say they win. In fact, if they mean believe, they're not going to go form NGC. Because the idea of the formation of the NGC is, is basically whether you accept it or not, simple reason to stop Madabio from becoming president after they failed to remove him as candidate of their party in 20, uh, leading up to 2018. So which means many people believed that he was not going to win. Then they believe that today, many people, the overwhelming majority of Sierra Leoneans and people who are not Sierra who are observing Sierra Leone, knows that the possibility of Madabio to remain, to win an election, a clean, a clean win, is more narrow, is more difficult than taking a camel and passing it through the eye of a needle, as the Bible will say. That's not the reality. And the possibility of Madabio being defeated by Samura Kamara is more obvious today than anything else. That one they were not accepted. Now it's a fact, it's a statement of fact. It's a statement of the reality. The objective conditions on the ground in Sierra Leone, those of you who are there already can see it. So Madabio by himself and in, in association with the sellout opposition in parliament and outside of parliament and this bad politics of lies and deception and disinformation wouldn't carry out, by that way they no more he campaign against himself. Now he campaign against himself. He destroyed his opportunities. He squandered everything for himself. And thanks to the effort of the hidden opposition that is behind him, using him as a shield, the same way they used, they, they were hiding behind an Eskoma and called for an Eskoma only constitutional crisis we create. That's what they are doing. So when this opposition that's hiding behind Madabio together with Madabio fail for neutralize the 
story of current corruption under Madabio put out by the African Express, they'll be left with no other option other for fine way. That was, so for we, by April, we know say the Madabio government is defeated completely on the public stage in terms of their story about corruption. Why we decide to take this? When we examine Madabio, we were, we, everybody want an end to corruption. We wrote about it in the 10 years of the Ernest Baiko government. We opposed to the election of the APC in 2018 because we were fed up with the, with the constitutional crisis, the corruption stories, and all of that. I wrote two books, by the way. My last book, in subtitle, are Corporate Gangsters, Multinationals, and Rogue Politicians, which is more correct today than it was in 2018. Why? Because the rogue politicians will not be seen in 2018. They are now part of the, the opposition that is in alliance with Mada Bio. So that definition becomes more, becomes more appropriate today because now we don't move into a full-blown situation where we can characterize Sierra Leone as a colony of gangsters, complete gangsters. So the, why I go back for talk about the, this lie about Japan in April, about telling us that after that lie day, we find out, say, in fact, there was no point to publish anything new again on Sierra Leone regarding corruption, because the case has already been made. We don't show say the president corrupt. We don't show say the president in WEF corrupt. We don't show say the president in chief minister corrupt. The moral ground, the moral authority we might have been getting now for talking about corruption was finished. Not because of we, we become, because of by the evidence of what he was doing. We don't show say the pronouncement of Mada Bio say they fight corruption and what they do now completely the opposite. And now be a big thing for, for my big problem for Mada Bio because they need the story of corruption for most of the opposition. The need for the corruption of Anes Kuruma, corruption of Samura Kamara, corruption of all the APC people we don't select, say they were not the APC people who target for make that story they stand. So that after Commission of Enquiry, if it's banned, they say they must say that too. They're not Chief Molina. It's an example. So anybody with Chief Molina, that's what they go for banner. So because people don't go know, say they're not Chief, they, go, they don't go get away for arguing against this selective approach to fighting corruption. If I look today, all the politicians, the way you know they oppose Madabio, where they work under Anes Kuruma, they're not corrupt. If we are accused of corruption, they're not left there. Anybody that is not a danger to Madabio's stay in power, that is, that is associated with Madabio's relationship with the opposition, has been let loose of, or was, not, was never included in corruption. Because if Mada will be really ready for investigate corruption under APC, completely really, if we start with parliament, there is no mind in agreement. If you talk about Sarah Rutile and all of these things, even on the eve of election and past mind in agreement in the parliament, who are they have been the leaders of parliament? Who are they? They are the opposition leaders today who are in charge of the APC, both in parliament and outside of parliament. These are the factional leaders who have organized a coup, and they are never accused of corruption. You cannot talk about corruption of Anes by Kuruma if you want to talk about corruption under APC. You, you, you ignore uh, the rule of Chariko Code in a parliament. They passed all the mining agreement. If you defend any serious uh, parliamentarian we, we hold strategic positions, you cannot excuse him and the other, and the other ones. So. The question then becomes, are we really ready to fight corruption or will they use corruption as a basis, use the ACC as a basis for fight for, for eliminate other polit political opponents in the interest of power, in the interest of staying in power? If it has been, it was done under APC, should it be done under APC, uh, SLPP? Then it, they therefore do it again the next time. How do we build the country through that way? How do we build the country through that way? So those are the questions. The question is, was the COI a genuine effort to fight corruption? Was the COI a holistic approach to addressing corruption under the tenure of the APC? Was, did the COI take into consideration each and every significant politician in the APC who participated in the governance arrangement? Or, was, or is the COI, as we now see, was actually an enterprise that was embarked upon by Mother Bill against a section of the opposition that they disagree with, and also 
left a section of the opposition will agree for left hand for making it continue and do all this bad we don't do in these four years? That, those are the questions. So, if you want to talk about why uh, Francis Ben Kelfala or the Anti Corruption Commission not ever fulfill the mandate and not ever uh, fight corruption, not look far. Look at the opposition. That's what we've come to see. Look at the parliament. Ask yourself why when an opposition leader in a parliament, for example, Chairman Ramadan Majuba, not ever say, may they invite anti corruption commissioner for answer to this reference, continuous reference to uh, the APC's past corruption? Why did none of the APC parliamentarians make it a point of duty for say the president don't lie when you talk about Japan? Why, have, why did they not defend the president? They are party leader and chairman, the lifetime. In fact, you, now these very young people in the party, the youth wing of the party, now led by, by Mahmoud and other people then, and supported by Chariko Kode, now they've been going up, now they start from 2013 at the APC convention uh, that you build in, and then first talk say, and the school will continue as chairman and leader for the third time after the election of 2020. They went to put lock up. Now the same one crown as uh, chairman and leader for life, the young generation of the party. The, now the same one begin mobilize for so-called uh, third time after you, now you. They, they build Mother uh, Anaskoma into this glorious figure. They, they knew, they undermined the democracy within their own party because they had their own agenda. They wanted to be the next generation and leaders of the party, so they prop up the so-called supremo in the in the party and encourage him to become, you know, the Mao Zedong of the APC. Now they do it. They never opposed his continuation. People like us, me, are they on record? Not only writing articles, but writing books about the situation, calling it up. The very people that now weigh the cost we say with the life and the opposition of parliament, with the talks where and then they cost me back for say with the attack on the school, man. They made a later life for an Eskuma. They say they made a later life for an Eskuma because they don't defend the youth. They don't empower the youth. They don't empower. And indeed, would I really, how did um, an ordinary member of parliament like Chairman Abadan Majuba graduate from an elected member from Brookfields in 10 years and rise up to the position of becoming? Um, a deputy flag bearer of the party in, in the space of 10 years. From 2007 when he entered parliament to 2017, leading up to 2018 election, he was appointed, selected and appointed as a running mate to the current uh, uh, to the former flag bearer of the party, former foreign minister, who is now in court on the supposed um, chance rebuilding scandal. The question is how, if that was not the promotion of uh, young people, how can this new party member, you might say, elevate himself to the point where he became the deputy uh, flag bearer of the party. Not by election. It was not by his own individual uh, credentials within the party, but it was based on the favors or the politics of selection, the politics of appointment. The same politics of appointment that this same movement we, we then create, eh, say they were opposed to later on and decide for use Madabio for help them carry out an insurgency within their own party. Because that's what you call this is a, you know the way Madabio they talk about the Augustine insurgency. No, the real insurgency is the insurgency led by parliamentarians, the young the young and intermediate generation of the party that call themselves so-called reformers in the APC against the gerontocrats within the party. There's nothing wrong in, in fighting for eternal party reform. For me, I like struggle. I like political struggle. I like um, 
young people who will fight for reforms, fight for institutional change, fight for organizational change. But I also think struggle should be principled. It should be fought in the open. People for know who that you be, what you want for, what you stand for, what you want, and why you oppose to something. You cannot hide in the dark. Politics is not witchcraft. Now only witch man there no more because then they gonna we we will assume say witches operate in the dark because why? We the two eyes what we get for see what happens in front of us even in, in you know during night time we know they see how witch man then they operate so we assume witchcraft na, 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 na night operation not only night operation an operation that is in the that happens in the extremity of darkness politics should not be witchcraft. Governance should not be witchcraft. The struggle for political leadership should not be characterized by, you know, the characteristics of witchcraft, darkness. You know they do that. You know they operate that way. Nobody fights for political... When you talk about political leadership, national leadership of a country, you're not talking about leadership of your political party alone. Political parties are vehicles to national leadership. So politicians who are unable incapable, afraid to come out and contest publicly for public offices and national leadership are not fit to be political leaders on that basis alone. Because if you deserve a kind of power through witchcraft, through darkness, hiding in the shadows, scheming and conniving and make yourself the accidental beneficiary of so-called process that you've initiated in the dark, it means that it's struggling for power through witchcraft. Who know they allow witchcraft for be part of uh, the governance arrangement of the country. <laughs> I mean, well, I didn't talk about witchcraft in the sense that people they talk about, but I'm basically talking about the inability of, or incapacity of so-called politicians to step forward if they want to be leaders. That's what leadership is about. You step forward, you show why you disagree with a particular system of affairs or how arrangement is being done, and you say this because of this and this reason, I put myself forward, and this and this and this is what I, I bring to the table, what distinguishes me from the rest of the crowd. But if you are incapable of doing that, then how do you want to represent other people who do not agree, even with the politics of your own party, who are on the national stage with their, with, with you know, how are you going to convince some of us? If you, if you have a thief, Power that you party, how you express it with your thief power at the national level? Or if you thief power that you party, thief power at the national level, how you go deal with the world? Through the thief process, through that politics of witchcraft at the global stage? So um, this is where we are. And with that talk, so not unconnected to the New York Times building, is part of the effort of the opposition in alliance with Mother Bio for use corruption against opponents of the regime, their own political, real political opponents. That is why the corruption uh, fight by Madabio has become useless. And this is why now, as you see, the Madabio now, the journalists where they support her now, the civil society where they would are now, the opposition parties in the parliament where they would are now, and the so journalists who support the opposition parties and they will the civil society where they would have now, they find the Africanist press as an impediment to their strategy. That this make them, they make we opponents, they make we targets, they make we enemies. This is why, so if you see argument between opposition and Africanist press, not all the opposition, that the opposition, we know they undersee, the opposition within the opposition, those who have been bought and compromised by Madabi, who are part of Madabi's strategy to use so-called corruption as a weapon of disqualification against their colleagues in their own parties and at the national stage. So why then, then see a problem with the African press? Because if we continue to publish not a story, they know evidence of Madabi's corruption and its frivolous use of public money, a problem for them. And they have no counter evidence to show that A, which will be published in a lie, two, that which will be published if far less than what in Ernest Goma that we don't do. That talk and they talk, I don't show no evidence. There is no time that the people of Sierra Leone have seen 
the transactional record of the APC or any other government other than what we have provided. The COI never do that. The GTT never do that. To the extent that even they in government are so scared. So what, is, what has been the government response for pretense to the publisher? Not, you know, important, but they not sack over 170 people in government, including the, the Auditor General and the Deputy Auditor General. Right now, as they talk so, for two weeks now, they harass Bank of Sierra Leone's workers there on the basis that what we write about ECSL and from the Bank of Sierra Leone come on, so that people like they leak the information. The opposition is dumped quiet. This is why the MPs cannot talk about this, because they may hope, say, by now, any politician in the APC will not be in agreement with the regime, will not be on the union side, will either be in jail on the basis of corruption or will have fled and left the country. All the people who are on travel bans, for the most part, are people who are not in agreement with Madabu. All the politicians who worked in the previous government, who are supposedly who have been considered supposedly not corrupt are people who are tied to Cherry Koko and the other movement of politicians and way the outside of parliament who are in agreement with Madabio's continuation and who have been helping him. So for the longest time, we have been focusing on Madabio and in corruption, the SLPP, we did not fully grasp the gravity of the compromising parliament, but as we keep pushing and pushing, but I can't tell them anymore how we fight. We see the government, they roll back, try to roll back. We knew there was an alliance. We knew there was state capture, but we now know the holistic nature of this state capture until April this year. Now we begin here. But before I come to that, I just tell them now. So by by end of April, when the town hall done, we don't say the government, the legitimacy in terms of corruption, we don't know. So now we don't say we even slow down in return because every Sunday we publish news, we slow down because we say. There was even nothing more to publish anymore, really. Not to say we don't get the evidence, but we find out, say, you cannot show any other theft now more than the theft of uh, Madabio, Fatima Bio, and the chief minister. Our case has been made in its full, fullest by that time, by April. In fact, we've been thinking it would take me like one year from January, we'll start for sure, for, uh, the expenditure of the president. We think it would take me one year before we reach that point B. But in three months, Four months without exposed, the whole government don't become exposed. January, we show the Lebanon trip and the December travel. We show Fatima Bioy in, in, in account. February, we show the chief minister. By the time we don't know it. By March, we show Nasit. And all that. Finally, the president now come on. All the people that try to defend, 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 take fake costs. They write all kinds of like life force. A job will be one, this and that. They say, that's not the work. They say, okay, we may you can number. Make you see. When a president, if he can't talk, they will listen to that. He came and spoke, and they will say he don't lie. So if you get a witness, if you get a, a, a trial, and that was a public trial, where we accused the government and the president of stealing public funds, and they took to the public stage for defending themselves. So it's not like where you get case no more, you go to your lawyer, your lawyer don't rehearse with you, say, where you go? And they ask you this question, ask you this question, you say this, you say this. As, as way, way of testimony. So the president was led in evidence by his uh, political allies, by his media allies, by his society allies, at the Bintumani in a so-called town hall to defend himself against the evidence of the African sphere. But before that, he had appeared on media platforms. So what we did, similar to what in any good lawyer would do, as the witness begin testifying when you come, you say, Objection, my lord. The witness has lied in his testimony. And they say, yes, not true. So the witness don't lie. The case don't know. So that's what we did. When the journalists, them, the civil society, the politician, the opposition will try to help Madabi for defending himself of corruption, then count and no more. He begin defending himself. Now she say, don't lie. And we don't lie, don't lie. So by the time they went on Friday now at the town hall, it was empty. You know, because nothing to say again. If I don't even talk again, the script will not prepare, I don't become useless. So after April, they were defeated. They never found another thing. So now after that, now May, we introduce new discussions. We publish May 25, the chance review in case. Oh, published down there now. What did we learn? We know certain of the, the opposition have begin whole meeting. How about do? First, they discussed 
putting the story on Anas by Kuruma and then by extension Samura Kamara. They say no, they then Karan go right up to South Anas Kuruma. It will be a problem. I mean, it will be difficult because they calculated that. So they decide say, okay, now what if we do? Make we zoom out of Samura. So they zoom the evidence in that. And, and then basically they transform the evidence. And we not only publish the money, we then transfer and you're going to begin argue, argue. First, they say that two million or more. APC, they don't, uh, don't account for the two million. I mean, they one million. The other one, they never account for uh, the one million way lost. There was newspaper publication around that. I think it was even published by Standard Times. This paper day. That was after the first invitation of Samura. They said, no interview. They don't release our bail. And then they talk, say, the, the commission talks in at two million. Nine they will account for one million. The APC then don't, SPP don't talk about uh, how they use And The other one, Samura, and also the same. Then that we publish the second article after the article day. We publish the article showing how the money will come out China come, when it come. And when the money go to New York, then she say, hey, this is now that. So they revise the story where they want for do. Then go bring other evidence. And talk say now, uh, now procurement scandal. Now I see the charges. Interestingly, all the people who they've lined up in testimony against uh, their principal uh, uh, person that they wanted, the former foreign minister, are individuals who are actually responsible for the transfer of these funds. In the case where anti-corruption get in front of the court, by the way, the judge will they don't wait they hear this case, and the same judge they use as a prosecutor for prosecute out of content. Can I go to jail on so-called fake treason charges? We know that story there. And the same judge again they use for scatter the APC. Up to now, the APC not get executive and transfer the case again and, and take the party and gain half the major half of the party to Cherry Koko and the own MP then and the other half to Afropita Conte. Now the same judge then they preside over this chance rebuilding case. So the, the case and the evidence of the corruption are two different things. Well, I don't see that they I don't already explain uh, the base and only for repeat. But the interesting part are the fact that the, all the witnesses from Ali Kabana or all the other listed witnesses, these are the officials in the embassy in New York and in Freetown who have served as the witnesses, listed witnesses against Samura Kamara, with the exception of, I think, the former uh, director general, um, where now, Adi Makoli, Mama, is a witness against uh, uh, Samura in this case, listed in the court papers. And Adi Makoli being one of the lawyers again defending, <laughs> supposedly defending, or as part of the defense team of uh, uh, Samura Kamara. Meanwhile, he's now fighting to be uh, the general secretary of the party. That's a different conversation. But I'm just highlighting this for showing how crooked our anti-corruption has become. So basically, when you take the chance rebuilding case, you will see say, all of the evidence that was used in the COI and all of that all was just mere story. So if these politicians believe, say, they really had a case at the chance rebuilding against the APC, they probably include that. Because I remember almost how many vehicles and all, all of that has been counted in the COI. Yeah. When I know uh, Minkailu uh, Ba's case, when I know about Momo Conte's case, yeah. when I know you about the cases of uh, Kemosi and other people, we know all the, all the stories and, and all of that, but we've never had the story in the COI and any other place, including the anti corruption and your lie lie investigations. They never mentioned it until we published the story. So what we published the story, what did the anti-corruption commissioner say? He said the he said the 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 president, the instructor, the president advisor, the teller for investigating. In fact, even the president we don't know, the president we don't first tell about this or investigate this story before we publish it. Which is a lie. 
But even if we have to take that as the, as the basis of the conversation, then that means the anti-corruption commission is under the control of the presidency. It's not independent. Now, if we take that and they say, now, not to the president, we tell her, they don't be, now we publish the story, they investigate. It means now the evidence will be bringing, now we bring the story to light. So I know here this APC politician and some of them, we they, they sell, we don't become compromised, they say, now we give Samura a case because we, now we publish body, chance to build the case. No. Now we now advise the Anti Corruption Commission and Mother Bureau for hang the case against a former foreign minister, a former presidential candidate, because you want him out of the race. That is the fact. Because the evidence published by the African Express, as I don't read Anaya, it in our website, shows that the money in question was transferred in 2019. Mother Bureau came to New York two times and never mentioned it. It was there, lingering there, for over three years before we report about her and show the money. We also show the money come from China come. And more money has been transferred to New York ever since for that same building. And more money is being transferred to New York up to now. What have you guys done with it? If anything, now we don't go to the point where our embassy and diplomatic uh, immunity that we had has been revoked by the Southern District Court of New York. And then don't tell the neighbor that they can sue in a court. Why? Because the chance rebuilding case is and remains an embarrassment to the international image of Sierra Leone. Meanwhile, now that same one advised the president for making talk say, my gonna bring to money that the town hall and talk say, what you make it take money, one million, two million, five hundred thousand, and work all over the place, that because they try for the PR salon image. Now in New York, you have a battered image of Sierra Leone, a battered image of the diplomatic representation of Sierra Leone at the United Nations. The only reason why the Americans are letting Madabio into America is because it's coming to the UN General Assembly. Now, the very General Assembly, the building where our people who represent us at the UN is left abandoned, dilapidated. More than $5 million cannot be accounted for by Madabio's officials. You, the opposition, we want for me, let's say, we give Samura case, we sit on the parliament, we are and they connive for, for implicate uh, our former foreign minister in a case and evidence that has nothing to do with him, dishonesty. But this is how you've been using the Anti-Corruption Commission and Anti-Corruption Commissioners in the past against other opposition politicians. So I mentioned Adema Kali here in passing, but I think I've already mentioned him again. We have to examine the Anti-Corruption Commission and their work leading up to 2018. I mean, leading up to the, both elections in 2012 and 2018. What was the essence of the Tim Bagate scandal? Who we are involved? How the Hajgate scandal came up? How was it handled? In both instances, how do these two corruption cases emanating from the Anti-Corruption Commission tied to the elections in 2012, 2018? And now, how this case also relate to the elections of, of 2023? When I feel say people are not able to draw analysis and the nexus and the relationship between these things. This is why it's important for us to tell each and every international organization that is putting money into our anti-corruption fight for stop. If any government can now in the future that's serious, the first thing they have to do is to get rid of the anti-corruption commission and build the transparency mechanism that we already have, the audit service, the Accountant General's Department, National Authorizing Office, and the parliamentary oversight responsibilities. They have to be strengthened. That's the pathway. And they take a break now because I see we don't go two hours now in this conversation. I'm not going to go and not talk small about the PR because it connected to what we talk about. So, direct or indirect, because all of this, the chance of building case. When a corruption case get for deal with the elections of 2023, the proportional representation get for deal with the election of 2023. It get for also deal with the same politicians then, with a scheme using law, using institutions in a crooked way for give themselves advantage in an election during every election cycle, at least from 2012 to now. At least we cannot build the quality of governance in our country when institutions and laws are being used crookedly 
And where you can check all the people the way they do this, they are all lawyers. You check the Corona Parliament and lawyer. You check Anti-Corruption Commission boss in 20, lead of 2012 and a lawyer. I didn't call it lawyer. Hmm? You check their allies, they're all, they are lawyers. So what we're dealing with basically is an enterprise of lawyers who want to hijack the state. And it's dangerous with the kind of country that we have. You cannot have the crookedness of lawyers taking over a state. It's going to be worse than, than, than a rebel army that takes over a state. So our struggle right now is to prevent rogue lawyers from taking over the state of Sierra Leone and using institutions and legislation to do that. Every well-meaning Sierra Leonean who is concerned about democratization in Sierra Leone and friends of Sierra Leone, international partners of Sierra Leone, should be concerned about this. Should be concerned about this. They have a responsibility in impressing upon the government of Sierra Leone, the institutions of Sierra Leone, and local politicians in Sierra Leone, and their allies and friends, their lobbyists within and outside of the country, for respect, the peace, and stability of the people of Sierra Leone. It's a must. The world cannot ignore what is evolving in Sierra Leone. It's a catastrophe. A catastrophe that is nurtured as a poisonous egg, and when hatched, it's going to be a disaster that nobody can control. Already, it's, it has become a headache, not just for the people of Sierra Leone, but for every individual that's engaged in Sierra Leone. We responsibility, our collective responsibility as individuals, whether we are Sierra Leoneans or non Sierra Leoneans, who have a duty of any kind of engagement with Sierra Leone should make it a priority to enforce uh, minimum standards of accountability and good governance. At least as part of the engagement, these principles have to be enforced, whether the engagement therefore do with institutions of the state or individuals working in these institutions, from the judiciary to parliament to political parties to civil society organizations, across the board, across the board. Across the board. So maybe we'll take um, a break, Naya, and, 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 and come back because um, usually I try, I dip and try very hard for making the conversation there um, brief. But I realize by the nature of the disaster in front of us, of the problems in front of us, it is always difficult to have this kind of conversation in a brief time. So um, thank you for listening and thank you for watching. I see that we have an appreciable audience, difficult conversation. In the final analysis, we have to be able to tell ourselves the truth. Without this truth, without this truth, I will tell you now, we, we are far away from not just development, but from peace and stability in our country. And, and those of us, who, be, who are objecting to violence, who believe that societies can change without violence. Society can change through ideas, through the proper understanding of things. We don't need to cost each other, but we have the responsibility to say and identify problems and our problem makers in our society, regardless of who they are to us. We have to, because if we not do that, we risk not having what we call a country, and for we, that country is what is more important to us, the ability to live in the country freely, to be able to express ourselves freely, to walk around freely, and feel at peace in our country. That's what we want. That is, and, and, and when we see this effort by local politicians for, for destroying the country, and in their process destroy the, and destroy the country, it becomes worrisome. So let's take a break here and we'll come back and sum up the conversation and then um, decide for see how we end up now. Yeah? I might probably talk about the proportional representation in brief, time up together here, or maybe I will do a special program on that. But um, thank you. And if nobody, uh, if you have some more time, you know, continue to share. Part of what we try for doing again, we make simplify this conversation, make it audios and make it accessible to people. There. We'll come back in a few minutes.
Yes. So um, maybe we, I know so we don't spend some more time, two hours now in this conversation, laying out the premise of the discussion. If anything, we don't highlight a number of things. One, that the chance rebuilding case, the money that was transferred to New York for the chance rebuilding was done in 2019 that Madabu in Kawana, America, since he become president, and we don't the tribe of Kawana, America before then, to the point that even APC people let me the provoke him for that. The whole country because Madabu already book America. So the only time we can America was 2018, September. If the chance rebuilding case been still not be an issue, even if you're not beginning at the COI GTT report, we can America, but don't see a problem this. If it have been APC problem that Samura Kamara have been created, if it be institute an investigation right after he take power, or even after we come on America in 2018, the fact that he not been do that should say the problem was never left behind by the APC. Number two, even in 2019, when they begin to transfer money, if the problem been there, they begin to transfer money in May 2019. This also now over a year after we mother be able to take power. If money for the project had been stolen by mother, by APC and Samura Kamara in particular before Mother Bio can have power, the Bio government would not have transferred money to New York beginning 2018, right up to September 2019. And in September 2019, Mother Bio visit the UN General Assembly, United Nations again. Every time we the Kaya, it come for UN meeting. So if he wasn't aware of the chance rebuilding problem, he also for don't see the problem in 2019 during second visit in America. But no. If and again in cabinet discussions, the chance rebuilding case or matter or in renovation for done in a cabinet as part of the cabinet discussion because where, where money is being transferred, that decision to transfer money and how ministries are operating, we always can go in a cabinet for discussion. If it was discussed in cabinet, if it was a problem of money that was stolen by the previous government for them constitute the conversations both at the GTT, COI, or even in cabinet and for them institute another investigation. But no. In 2020, we might have you go to Lebanon, you can go money over a million dollars, say go honeymoon, this and that. You come on the charter plane, you come and can launch the GTT, uh, the white paper, uh, the COI report. He still not mentioned the chance rebuilding case. And that was three years after we had our first visit to America. The chance rebuilding matter uh, only become an issue after the African Express publisher in May, on May 25. 2021. This was um, three years after we made a bill on Kana Power. And at that time, the anti corruption said they investigate. The anti corruption commission, in the investigation, not ever mentioned about the nearly $5 billion we transfer transferred 2019. They said they go 2011. And when they go 2011, the only possible way they hold that's Samura Kamara in the APC. And then nobody is talking about what thing happened to the $5 billion. When I see two weeks ago, or a week ago, I go to the embassy building in New York. I don't show the exact. Some of the video that they right inside the building, cockroach, arata. They come inside the building, they go inside other people in the building. Little Joko. The same way we meet the building, May 2021, when we report that the same way, if I don't worse than now. And now, the neighbor, the way the, the construction, the even the other house, where water comes and they build it. If they flood tea, the flood goes inside other people's house. They don't care we go to court. Where then can we go to court? The embassy people, Ali Kaba, the other people, and one way left there now, they don't get any argument for making them say, they get diplomatic immunity. They're not supposed to care they go to court. The case go on, the court don't rule saying a lie. We know they allow them to come poil other people. I don't know thief money now, and I don't use. We have caused this embarrassment, left the building like I did so. 
Il pour la poêle pas la pluie pour les rembours de la série au travail de travail ou la main. So which means the money we might have been taken now we now we country now the central bank for travel go Lebanon go Japan go so go Ethiopia go England here Fatima be able to take part them that five hundred thousand we take for Canada New York five hundred thousand for Canada New York pocket money none no go back na salon. If we take that money, the five hundred thousand, say it the repair salon image, get for the present salon. Now salon they say they fed for get UN Security Council seat, non permanent position at UN Security Council. And the UN Security Council will hang their seat. We not even get embassy. Nearly five million more than that now. They don't transfer anywhere for building embassy. They see the building for us. But to me, I show a video live one. Wanna see? A plan set for go there back and go broadcast straight from the place. Now that will be on do. Can go then and now right at the building. And maybe that will get for do. Because under that embarrassment, they will make the fixer. Because so, if these people have been get really evidence against APC regarding the transfer building case, the question is why not been come up until they will bring and come. So if now we bring the evidence, we want to the evidence will, as I don't show now systematically in the discussion, the evidence will be published. You get for do with money we then take 2019 for build the embassy, for renovate and build two more floor. They're not one. The first question, where the money we then transfer between May to, to September 2019, where that money did nearly five million dollars will come up from China, where they send all to New York. That money then transfer from the bank. So, so, so where? Why? Okay, make we say that we get money to add away some other camera than the Where the money that transfer 2019? Who that take her? Who said the money go? Why they not complete the building then with that money we that transfer in New York? Where the people that will be there in charge of the Ministry of Finance and Freedom, Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs? And also the embassy in New York. Where the, where the minister, where the, uh, uh, the the ambassadors in New York, they are all the witnesses against Samura Kamara now, including Ali Kaba, including Kai Kai, including all the other people there. So the only people there, and they will save in the book and the embassy in Asai Dunalu, we not be the head of chancery no more. So they add the one and they say not to you know not to APC person no more. Then I know your APC people in office. I don't know we get connection with someone and I swing the drive. Drive for say. So we play politics with our corruption fight. They weaponize corruption. The this Principally, not get nothing to do with the fight against corruption. If it was really a fight against corruption and the chance rebuilding case, they want to use as a disciplinary method. What the people that know know that by ten months they will remove Ali Kaban and New York. That are like two weeks or a week before they publish the the article. When when they do the cabinet changes after we publish the chief minister after that April, Mada will reshuffle in government. You take David France, you can foreign affairs. Take Ali Kabasan and go to Egypt. You remove Nabila Tunis. You remove Ali in New York. So people have, people have said the first argument, in fact, this message was coming from uh, APC social media people who are tied to the parliamentary leader and the other op opposition people there. And also uh, their friends in the ruling party, the new social media people in general, they begin to say, oh, the African Express publication, I know Big Madab, you don't remove the foreign minister, you don't remove, you don't remove David Francis. Then they begin to say they don't demote David Francis from chief minister to foreign minister. No, it was not a question of demotion, not a question of changes because of the corruption. Now we have for cover up corruption because at the time, at the very week, when the New York people had the neighbor they sued, then they can't go to the matter in the court. The we don't know that because we don't follow the story for like two months. We will gather the Financial details and aggregator, and make sure say for to wait till the case go to court. At that time, we are all we are now following the Harveys and other people there and the matter. So, Mother Bill, because of the pressure in America 
and the diplomatic embarrassment he decided to change Ali Kaba from the place. Senango. In fact, in one of my discussions while they interviewed the neighbor, they were, let me tell, tell them, say, Ali Kaba, they were shocked. They said, really? With all the things happening here? Basically, that kind of job, they, 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 they saw it as a compensation because they expect, say, if an ambassador don't preside over that kind of uh, disgraceful situation, and, and ministry officials in the future don't do the same thing, they should not only be sacked, they should be arrested, they should be put on trial. But when me inform them that the officials who are responsible for this have been transferred to other diplomatic missions and other ministries, they could not understand it. They don't even understand that. And now the whole world know, say, the evidence being adduced against Amura Kamara is not the evidence of the corruption that was reported by the African Express. And they don't go say we know holistic. If they had the evidence before now, why did they not include it? So we gotta investigate now for people to understand some of these problems where they happen in our country and why we corruption fight not so we got to look at the entire anti-corruption commission from 2002 to 2007. We look at Van Collier. We look at uh, uh, how by 2005, the SLPP, they hound Val Collier now, Tijan Kabad, and they go to parliament, they, they harass and they, they pull up. Then, one of, the, one of the difficulties of the Anti-Corruption Commission by then was it never had the power to prosecute, whether investigate case, then they cannot go to the law officer's department, the attorney general's office, and they prosecute. So you find out that there was a hindrance to the point that when Val Collier, so by that time you not be required a lawyer for be head of the anti-corruption commission. So all of that changed where by 2007, the British and international people have been all lost faith in the anti-corruption commission after the removal of uh, Val Collier by the SLPP. I was an editor leading up to that situation at Concord Times and I left Concord Times shortly before, before the removal of Falcoli at the time. But anyway, what am I saying? By, by 2008, when, by 2000, when I broke Koruma came and then get the 2008 Act, a reform of the Anti-Corruption Commission, including legislative reform, they introduce this thing outside the commissioner has to be a lawyer, somebody at least with 10 years post-bar experience. We don't pass for 10 years away, you could say qualify now for appointment to judge or other position. So that they will get an experienced person with law and then we will do matters of law and then change the legislation to make sure the commission get the power now for independently prosecute people. And this is not true, the British defeat and all the ones that they in fact they begin reinstate funding to the anti-corruption commission after we had Skurumaka. And this was following an Skurumaka's visit to Chatham House when he came first in power. At Chatham House, and that's how I didn't talk about Sierra Leone Corporation, Sierra Leone Limited, the first meeting organized by, you know, to Peter Penn for the other people. At the time, the British Department for uh, the International Secretary, uh, Douglas Alexandra, talks in the reinstate British funding to Sierra Leone. If I remember at the same time, this is something I made reference of in one of the essays in my book, Neocolonialism you know, in West Africa. We start talk about. Um, the the confidence was rebuilt, and it, you see now after that one, the, you see these companies are now begin to come: African Minerals, London Mining, you know, the rest is history. Adax, because the legislative reforms, both at the Anti Corruption Commission, they do in business reforms, which are easy for make uh, the Registrar General's office. The procedures were relaxed, the bureaucratic procedures for set up business and open, so they opened the country opened up for business. And there was some kind of what they call, for people who like to talk about investors, investor confidence, based on the legislative reform which took place at the Anti-Corruption Commission. By the way, uh, they had developed um, an anti-corruption strategy in 2005. Mr. I've been part of the consultative, I've been attending some of the consultative meetings held with journalists. In one of those meetings, I think, was chaired by Tambayo, 
uh, at the British Council where we are, we are all brainstorming regarding uh, the media's role and contribution to the fight against corruption, which evolved into the anti-corruption strategy of 2005. So by 2008, and one of the things we all identified are the inability or the lack of power on the anti-corruption commission at the time for the independent process of prosecuting, because it was still left in the hands of the Attorney General's office, the Minister of Justice. So which means it was difficult to prosecute people, and that was difficulty faced by uh, Van Collier. So Tijan Cole was the first to have gotten the power to independently begin to carry out prosecutions on you and being a lawyer. So he entered into difficulty and, and problems with Anes Kuruma within, I think, the same year. So in my discussions, always, always, when I remember, um, I have interviewed and met Val Collier, but I never met Tijan Kohl, and I still don't ever meet him, so I don't know him. But if I assess anti-corruption commissions based on the fact that they tried to do something and we are hounded out, or supposedly left because they felt unable to do the right thing. I have always named Val Collier as number one. For me, he is the best anti-corruption commissioner we've always produced. Why? Because I watched him up close. By the time Tijan Cole became ACC commissioner, almost I was not regularly in the country. So I never met him and I still don't meet him. So I can only speak about his integrity or what he has done based on his conflict with the Anes by Kuruma administration and the cases relating to income electrics that I read in the papers. But moving forward, if we discount them two people and they, we come to see the Anti-Corruption Commission under Joseph Kamara. I don't know how to pronounce his middle name, you know? Uh, so I prefer to use the two uh, names that are easy for me because I don't know the Fitzgerald or, you know, how um, that is actually pronounced, but, and I hate to also use the abbreviation JFK because it makes me think about America, JFK in America. But so in this case, I'm just using Joseph Kamara. Joseph Kamara himself, lawyer. In the, one of the major cases was the Tim Bagate, the Al Jazeera documentary. And we have to now come back and begin review. It's an important uh, development in the Anti-Corruption Commission because one of the, the highest profile uh, case that we've seen, first, I would say in the history of the Anti-Corruption Commission where the sitting vice president was supposedly implicated in what, what, what appeared to be a corruption scandal on Arthur by Al Jazeera and that involved an investigation done by one of Sierra Leone's uh, known investigative journalist, Soryo Samura. We get to review all of that. But the important thing here is that that, that story itself had implication for the elections of 2012 because it was going to determine if the matter was prosecuted to court, as it were, it would have prevented, if it had been demichaja and going to court and maybe convicted, and then that would have meant that that vice president would have not been able to continue as vice president in the next election. You know, it would be the running mate to Anes Kuruma leading up to, to a second round. So basically, when you look at the case, whether it was meritorious or not, the implication of that trial itself had to do with the fact that it impliedly connected to the election and whether Samsumana at the time was going to be retained as a running mate or not. And those of us who were active now observing the politics at the time and even being involved in it leading up to 2012, there was popular discussion all over the place whether the APC was going to drop its vice president for uh, 2012 or not. And there were even APC politicians who were actively hoping they, were, they would be um, beneficiaries if that development were to take place. Then a separate conversation. It will be a continuation part two of this conversation that I intend to hold, examining the Anti-Corruption Commission, the chance building case, and all of that. So what I say, the Anti-Corruption Commission 
has been central to the public election process. Instead of being central to corruption and help for, for enforced transparency, it, it become part of an institution to uh, affect the electoral process. But in, in the case of the first, these two instances that I'm using, it became you know, part of the internal party conflict at the APC without the support of opposition politicians, part of the internal politics of the party. But as, as the development went on, the Anti-Corruption Commission came up and announced that the evidentiary threshold, I still remember the word, the, the evidence is not of a sufficient threshold that will allow for the matter to be charged to court. So which means corruption, as it relates to the timber gate, would not be used as the basis for the disqualification of Samsumana in 2012 to run along with Anes Kuruma as his running mate. So if Anes Kuruma at the time wanted another running mate, he would have to select that running mate independent of any uh, corruption allegations that, were, that were, may have emanated from the Al Jazeera documentary. Interesting country, I will tell you. You know, I still believe in the phrase, we live to learn. We live to learn and we learn to live. As long as you are alive as a human being, no matter how educated you are, no matter how much you know, you will always learn new things. You will discover new things as you go along. And the beauty of investigative journalism it's not always what you look for that becomes interesting to you. It's the surprises that you encounter while investigating stories. And that, that for me, that is the most interesting part. So I will look for corruption at the Bank of Sierra Leone or corruption in the Minister of Finance. And in the process now, while they investigate, I will look the minister down. Then I can't see now this corruption at the Ministry of Finance. Oh. You get to do with corruption. Nah, the Minister of Agriculture. Not only the Minister of Agriculture, oh, it tied to the Minister of Rural Development. So you are not looking for all these other connections, and then they just show up as part of your investigation. So in investigating the corruption of the Mada Bureau regime, in investigating and observing how evidence of Mada Bureau's corruption is being, you know transformed or been effort for for undermine the evidence that we've produced and our effort to say no it's not it's not going to happen you cannot roll back this narrative the surprises that have come as a consequence of this discovery are the most interesting lessons for me and by the way i write a new book right now i hope this book is going to come out soon where some of these stories that have not been told would be part of the things that I read. You cannot want to make sure what I read my book. I say, oh, no, yeah, I tell not don't talk about all this. At least there should be something inside that will make you satisfied when you spend some money to buy it. So what I want for talk, now that the anti-corruption, the use of the anti-corruption for try for disqualified candidates is not new with, Sam, with Samura Kamara. It is an effort that has been started way back at least in 2011. In, in 2005, they had to chase uh, Valcolia out because if we continue for sure that corruption, if we affect uh, the SLPP in the elections of 2007, and it did affect them. Because I remember when Tijan Kaba was launching the anti corruption strategy of 2005 at the British Council, he talked one thing. He said, the ACC under Valcolia don't make in government so unattractive that even if you try for a point, well meaning Sierra Leoneans and now for take government position, they know they want for they know one for taker. Why is it because many of them are now scared of being associated with, with the government of corrupt people? Simply because the ACC at the time, two months before that event, had announced that they were investigating five ministers without disclosing who these ministers were. And that was a month after they had indicted Okere Adams in the Ministry of Marine Resources and Fisheries on corruption allegations relating to ADB funds, African Development Bank funds for the development of fishery 
sector, artisanal fishery support. This was in 2005. So, which means uh, by then, now the anti-corruption commissioner had the target. The same way Lara Telopias became a target because they think say, the independence of the institution and its effort to show corruption of the government go Hamburg the Emma Bio's chances. But after that, after by 2008 to 2010, 2011, the, the, the work of the commission on politicians in government, the commission assumed this different characteristics where its work now has the implication for elections, public elections. We see 2012, we get for drilled and tear more in subsequent conversations. But the same thing again happened in 2017, 2018 with the Hajj Gate, where the vice president and other leading officials in the party were implicated in the Hajj Gate scandal. And at this time, Adi Macaulay was the anti corruption commissioner. So the question is how did the Hajj Gate affect the leadership contest in the APC? And how did it affect the elections of 2018? How did it affect the flag bearer competition in the APC? What role did the Anti-Corruption Commission and the Anti-Corruption Commissioner played? By the way, all of them were on a lawyer level, from Tijan Cole now to Adi Macaulay, I mean to Joseph Kamara to Adi Macaulay, and Cherry Kuko, they're all on a lawyer level now. So um, we've spent two hours, 33 minutes into this conversation, but I believe I don't highlight, um, at least flag the chance of building case, the fact that the evidence before the court or the case before the court in Freetown is not the actual case. It's a case developed by the Anti-Corruption Commission in association with the regime and its implication is the elections of 2023. Both the SLPP, the SLPP fears Mother Bio, they fear for contest with Samura Kamara again in the next election because in the last election, with the unpopularity of the APC, with the inexperience, you might say, of Samura Kamara in the political landscape as a politician, and the fact that he was new to the APC's politics, and added to the fact that almost all the leading APC politicians who were hoping to be leaders or leading the party to the election we are unable to do that. And the dramatic role that the Anti-Corruption Commission played in the process or leading up to the flag bearer competition, still in both rounds, first round, second round, Madabiu, not able to edge Samura Kamara with a lead of up to 2%. It is the, mo is the, the narrowest of elections that we've had with the exception of perhaps the 1967 elections with a different kind of election. But in a, in a post one party state environment, we've never had that kind of narrow, narrow contest where a president narrowly became a candidate, presidential candidate became narrowly, was narrowly elected into public office. So now four and five, leading up to five years now, that candidate still remained more relevant in the APC has made himself more relevant in quarters of the country that supports the APC more than he was in 2018. Anybody will deny this. He just went for work against truth. That's a fact. And this, and Mother Bio now, from post-2018, has become less attractive, even within his own party, less attractive within his own a stronghold and don't become less attractive internationally. So you see the you see the the contradiction. The president who narrowly emerged, the candidate who narrowly emerged as the president has become massively unpopular within his own party, in his own party strong base, and internationally, and by extension nationally. Whereas the candidate he defeated, narrowly defeated, has become more attractive among 
the grassroots of his own party among uh, the suffering population and more popular within his own party base. So in a contest between these two people, it becomes extremely difficult for the president who narrowly defeated this candidate in the last election to now defeat him. It has become, it has become much more obvious for this narrowly defeated candidate in 2018 to now popularly defeat the incumbent president if we were if they were both to contest in any election in Sri Lanka, where the competition is well guarded and policed. This statement will make is is displeasing to many of the opposition. We don't want that, but that's a recognition of truth. Recognition of truth. Does it speak to my preference? No. Does it speak to um, what I want? No, it just speaks to the reality of the situation. Have I contributed to it? It's upon the public to judge, but I, I am not. I'm not a member of the APC, not a member of the SLPP. I have a proven track record of writing against both parties at least for the last 20 years. That now evidence nobody will deny that one day. So, does my statement appear uh, welcome to APC supporters who support Samura Kamara? Of course, they would never like for hearing this kind of word, but it's the, it's the truth. Does my statement appear uh, unwelcome to supporters of the parliamentary leader of the party who has, who has pretended that he is supporting this candidate of theirs while he is not? No, they don't go like this. They don't go like that. So you see, these kind of uh, statements of truth are going to be supported by one group of people and opposed to by the other group of people, depending on where they stand in the political landscape of Sierra Leone and within their parties and their own interest. What does it do for me? It make it their reaction amuses me. So, so when I look at there, now you find the situation where um, in the past couple of weeks, NGC supporters will criticize me and defend Terikoko, and then they try to say my statements impliedly support Samura Kamara's campaign. Then at the same, but and then and then. They, they tend to um, say my, my criticism of the parliamentary leader, they are angry about it. So what that statement shows is that the question it raises, if you think my statements are in favor of the previous flag bearer of the, the APC in 2018, but it is against the parliamentary leader of the party, what are you saying? Are you saying the two? Are you not saying that the two politicians do not represent the same interest? They are fighting. They are not on the same platform. They are not part of the same agenda. That's what you are. That is, that's what you are confirming, and that's the message I'm saying. So, the APC and NGC and other people that we don't criticize, we tend to be angry over these statements that I'm making, are basically endorsing the facts of my analysis which is the parliamentary leadership of the APC has deviated its, its own agenda, is separate from the, from the agenda of its gerontocrats, many of its gerontocrats, the old guard of, his, of the party, which is they want to be the inheritors of the APC. There's no problem with that. The problem is they decided to ally with the state in their effort for overthrow the new party leaders. Eh? That is to say, they know for win, they're not able to win any competition at the APC if Madabu not help them. And how Madabu help them? Madabu decide for disable them, remove the majority in their hands so they know so they will justify why they're not able to take action at parliament. The second thing we do, 
he, he used the court for appoint a replacement for the MPs and they so they say, oh. Then he used the same court again for scatter the young party and give them the young party. And by every indication, they do not want a constituted APC. They don't, they don't really want real structures of the party because otherwise by now the party nobody talk about executive structures. But from the ward to the zonal to the constituency to the district to the region, the national and diaspora levels of the party, there are, there are no structures, no known structures of the APC. So if elections were to ha happen today, the people that we would nominate, people that will get a, a proportional representation would be the caretaker executive led by a faction of the party that's allied to Chariku and another faction that is allied to Alfred Peter Conte and who, whichever flag bearer hidden that he's representing. So that is the state of the party. So this also gets us at least matter briefly of the proportional representation. I don't post them there as a proportional representation has nothing to do with the presidential election. The proportional representation requires the expansion of you know, membership when it's a district block system. Basically, the, the key thing of proportional representation, people will not understand. You know, they elect, individuals do not elect uh, members of parliament, not only they vote directly for the members of parliament for who, not only they choose who they have to go in the parliament for represent who they the political party. Then they make a list of people away from who represent them in the parliament. So, which means it is the executive of the party, the party chairman, the party secretariat, that they get for choose, select, and appoint who represents the party in parliament, not the electorate. So you do vote for APC, the APC people are within charge of the party and the party secretariat and the chairman and the Bussidon now say, okay, Daniel, uh, uh, Honorable Abdul Kago, you will not defend, you will not deal with we. So because you don't deal with we all this while, elect people are not like you in a constituency, but you know, you know, one of the most faithful possible, faithful to Cherry Koko. Okay, now, Sergeant, write a name, number one. Okay, then put her. Uh, oh, we got one diaspora post in America and uh, uh, so so place Columbus. Okay, so it, it can give more contribution. Anyway, they call party contribution for fundraising. It will give more past anybody more at the name instead of that register. So that is how the party decides who will go to parliament under a proportionally represented parliament. So now, in the case of the APC. Is beneficial to the parliamentary leadership of the party because they get the party right now. They are not only holding the party hostage, they are also in charge of constituting an election committee. That election committee will then go put together, then go for develop, uh, then go for lead the party into the small, small convention. Today. So you are imagining a situation where many of the people tied to this movement are now vying for national executive positions, including, for example, Adi Macaulay, who I just mentioned with his role in the Anti-Corruption Commission leading up to 2018, is competing for General Secretary of the party, Secretary General of the party. So if he were to become part of the General Secretary of the party and in allegiance is tied to the APC faction that is in parliament, so you it it imagine where all these honorable members of parliament who are down dissatisfied with, where if you then turn up for go compete, now then constant people will say we will vote against you because you're not representing our parliament, you don't vote against the public election bill. Now they all make NIN kind of here. Now they all not challenge my view. Now all not sell out. So when I don't when I refuse for vote, then now then they vote themselves, now then they elect themselves now, and then they choose themselves. So the selection an appointment that they oppose under an escrow mine and the other and other people is what they want to have the power if they emerge as the executive new executive of the party that they now get for make the list of the young people and back for going to parliament and they make themselves and the young people in the parliament and don't forget the parliament already don't pass a law where they increase the young benefit and salaries and things so they will be comfortable in parliament now, by 2028 or thereafter, after 2023, 
most of these people dreaming about power. If they are old, they will be expired. So that's how. But we never talk about this enterprise and this process. It will be unjust for me for spend this time and talk about proportional representation because I think it requires the same kind of time we don't take for Gisu. But one thing about proportional representation has nothing to do with the presidential election. The presidential election will not be a matter of strategy for 2023 in a And there is two ways he's going to do that. Candidate exclusion for use state institutions, in this case, for use anti-corruption and the judiciary for remove. Any candidate from APC where he knows it, if you contest with her, you could defeat her. And Naya, the only candidate where you don't identify, you don't put more than the front line where they harass more, we said Samura Kamara. And the reason is, you know, be better and better, better one at the last election. And today, if they compete, by based on analysis and, and, and we own probability, put on a, on a scale of probability, there is more likelihood for Samura for beta this time, landslide than any other time. So it's it, it afraid for competition. I know that we make it go afraid for making it a With the corruption, we don't accuse all them are Samura them with an escrow, and they want it all. If you can't lose power to them, to the APC group, we are the group we don't accuse of corruption, don't harass pass mark. In the phrase, say trouble, get for the nine years. Big, big trouble. Trouble, he has stolen money, evidence of stolen money, evidence of stolen lives. Corruption and murder is already on his head. He cannot afford to lose power to an unfriendly opposition group of politicians. If Mada be for lose power, he would prefer for lose power to the opposition politician that we not harass. We're not accused of corruption. And the one that they will know them, Cherry Goku, them, as in parliament. So you investigate corruption, but they always they avoid parliament. Let's like, say parliament not corrupt. <laughs> the bribery that takes place in parliament, huh? all of the agreements. Look now, we talk about $10 million uh, corruption scandal with, with ECSL. No parliamentary will talk, talk about that in the opposition. Ask them why. Because they do not want corruption on Mother View. They want the corruption story for they. Mother View forget the moral ability for talk about corruption. So one, one, one opposition politician tell me, say, what's well, about Mother View not get the moral authority for talk about corruption? Because it's more corrupt. We say, well, in at least Commission of Inquiry not in a aid force, in not in a court. And until somebody charge and can't go to court, you don't go blame her for that. So you see, justification from an opposition politician, basically. And the APC itself has been saying anybody who get a case in a court, you know, for compete for the party leadership or flag bearer position and for disqualifier. These are the realities. So the question is are we fighting corruption or using corruption as a basis for exclude other candidates? The exclusion of candidates is mother view strategy. If you look, if you say this person I threat, then cancel you from com competing by using the judiciary and the anti-corruption commission. The same way we use the judiciary and anti-corruption commission for harass and school management and left leaning party. This man to the same thing. This other thing is voter suppression for bring law and use institution that will make sure the people that will likely vote against Mada Bio and place the way where the opposition get stronghold made them not able for vote. And we see the public elections be to magic. We talk about that. It happened. The NIN, all these strange laws there now, birth certificate, this and that now, but and that, NCRA, Statistics Sierra Leone, the ECSL, the parliament, are all involved for do this. Now, what in the parliamentarian will get in return? They then said the opposition at parliament because they don't and then pass the law that they allow all the tears for happen. Then say forget the bargain. The young bargain is they have to be in control of parliament. So one way for do that is because now I understand that for making you qualify for APC symbol, if not constituency based election, you can for uh, compete. I think say now that election and get not to post nobody assign symbol to you for cut away from uh, how to be disqualified from people are like using to see more money or this and that. So many of these opposition politicians in parliament or members of parliament, I believe from what I'm told, many of them cannot win in an inter-party competition 
for symbol to the good enough constituency uh, 015. The computer will get a symbol. There is a possibility that many of them will not return with the symbol because of how they don't behave. So fear that they will be punished by their party and their party supporters for their role in parliament in condoning the corruption, in condoning Mother Bill's atrocities. They want to forcefully take over the party, forcefully appoint themselves to go parliament. And that is what the PR is going to do for them. For the APC, if they take over the political party as a new executive, and then go write the list, list and so they go write themselves inside parliament, appoint themselves to go to parliament. Meanwhile, they may oppose to appointment that their own party and selection, they will select themselves and select their own people, their supporters, and to go to parliament. That's what the proportional representation will do. And that's how they elect them to go to parliament now. Let them be the majority. The speaker of parliament said, if you see that you will not do nothing again, nobody will blame her because you don't get direct relationship with the, with, with the electorate. So proportional representation undermines direct democracy, direct representation. It, it, it basically a proxy, democracy by proxy. That I call democracy where the party is the primary uh, representation. The, prim the party decides representation. So the party becomes the proxy vehicle for determining who goes as a representative to parliament. No, it's wrong. Democracy should not be by proxy. Democracy should be direct. It should be representational. Effective representation comes from entrance legitimacy. Entrance legitimacy is principally done by direct vote. Direct vote. And then when the representative, that is the result of a direct election, is in the House of Representatives, he or she has direct legitimacy. And then you will get the effective legitimate power for use delegated authority, delegated sovereignty. That's not democracy. Otherwise, there's no need for, for elections. There's no need. Now, I just decided to say, you know, it's matter if you continue with self, hold on there. We're going to have a party there now. So, for the NGC, what it will do for them, because now potentially they cannot retain their small members, I don't know if they have four or five members they get. If they were to contest, there's every possibility that they might lose those seats, individual seats. But in the situation of the by a district block system, the percentage, the percentage in a 5%, 10%, or 20%, they might likely aggregate that for themselves. So for smaller parties in parliament, it, it, the possibility for me to increase the members then. So themselves now, if they get diaspora supporters, they will be not to support the party, then they are Canada, then they are uh, England, then they are uh, America, their names will appear in the list. And that's how they will go to parliament, to appointment. So in the cases where they will have contested and lost individually, so the, based on the percentage, they will just go. So the NGC they vote for, they will go. So the same thing, if they lower the percentage threshold, if SLPP again will get some representation in the APC districts. But really, if, if, if Mada will be just want parliamentary majority for himself, the easiest way he will do it is to multiply the constituencies in the new area. If really Mada Bill just cared about how to take over parliament coming forward, he will say better do boundary delimitation, he add more constituencies if you want. So now, if you want for desperate visit a real dictator, how the APC want to put her without their own connivance in parliament, you know one care about law. He will just say more, yeah, the census will just use that no more. And add more district for inside now, the south and the east. He get more members in parliament. But because they don't know senior registration figures, don't outweigh the statistics, they don't use statistics for divide districts and add for itself. Now they don't decide, say, okay, what we go do? Maybe we revert to the earlier plan, which is the basis of the public elections law. We don't allow you for suppress people and for register, you know, X, Y, and Z. So now allow we for, because by now, what you for don't get now the public elections register. Provisional public elections register. Don't we'll talk about PR or no PR. There's no basis for that. The law is clear. There are already existing constituencies. The constitutional amendment is different 
form, as somebody just tell me, a lawyer just alert me. The constitution of the 1991 constitution of Sierra Leone is not the same as the constitution as amended. Distinction. But even the so-called amendment not apply in periods of stability as we have it. It just sounds like uh, Abbas Bundu been talking this say, two roads to parliament. Yes, you get the main road, which is uh, the third road, the paved road, and you get a backyard road where rugged and whatsoever. Why will you take a new vehicle and drive on a, on a gravel road where you get a paved road? Kulta. Because you want to destroy the vehicle. That's all. There is no point in circumventing the process of elections, avoiding the legitimate method, known method that enhances the direct participation of citizens and seek an alternative route to an, elect to an electoral process that, that, gar that guarantees rogue politicians their place in governance. No. Not an effort for rig. So, Proportional representation is at the benefit of parliamentarians, in this case, opposition parliamentarians, that it is for the presidency, the compensation. And you can, you know, the opposition, they get um, ways to end this. And one of the ways to end this is by using the legislative powers that they have. Section 86, subsection 2, allow... 20% members of parliament for request the convening of an emergency meeting of parliament if they so desire. And it's a must. The constitution provide on the part of the speaker of parliament for oblige. The APC alone get twice that number. Add in an NGC, then get overwhelming majority for request the invitation of CONE and this electoral commission and question them on the basis of the illegality the urination on the constitution. Basically, then people are on peace power constitution. They don't turn the constitution to a toilet paper, tissue paper, by merely thinking that you can make law by proclamation, make law by decree, amend the constitution by decree. It's a coup, a constitutional coup. And the repercussions for a constitutional coup are there because when parliament fails to protect the constitution, they are ceding that responsibility to other institutions. And one institution that comes to mind is the military. It's their responsibility to maintain constitutional order. So parliament and the executive branch of government have overthrown the constitution. And then do and so by June, they deliberately did so by introducing a new legislation. We're not getting nothing inside other than this problematic legislation. There was nothing wrong with the Public Elections Act of 2012. If they really wanted a clean, and clean election, they're not going to take away this road. So is the, the flag bearer competition in the APC and the determination of Mada Bio for remain in power, nine them march together against the national interests of the people. And the principal protagonists in this process not the opposition in parliament, especially the opposition leaders of the APC, NGC, and C4C. They should be held squarely responsible for all of the constitutional atrocities that Mother Bio has committed. They shared in it, they participated in it, they condone it. Why? Because they are hoping to be benefactors and inheritors of the state the corrupt state that Madabio is currently superintending, and not only that, they don't help us to make bad laws. The local government legislation, the banking legislation, we introduced the, the new currency, the Cyber Act, the Public Elections Act, the um, National Security and Central Intelligence Act, where they before them now, and the Political Parties Act. All of this, now the architecture, the foundation of a dictatorial state, not just for the present, but for the future. So this group of lawyers, we don't gang up together, say, and they go for take over the country after Mother Bio, and they don't make the law they are for themselves. And the, the danger is, we had a, a constitutional review committee that was done under Anes Kuruma that would have addressed all of these constitutional infractions in the constitution. It was stopped 
And now we don't kind of say the young generation will be very influential under Ernest Kroma. Many of them lawyers, as I have listed them, are the very people that should be held responsible for the failure of the review process with Justice Kawa and Superintend, which would have become the new constitution of Sierra Leone, where all of the powers they have the presidency would have been minimized or addressed. But they refused. Instead, in a post annex by Kuruma period, they have developed new secondary legislations now, will not only add to the danger of the, of the draconian provisions in the constitution, but don't also lay the foundation for the emergence of a dangerous dictatorship in the future. And the danger is the people away, they hope for inheritance. They are our lawyers. They are our lawyers. And when you get lawyers at the level of a state, at the level of state power, with a bad constitution, dangerous constitution, and dangerous secondary laws, what you are looking at is a rebellious group in power. Dangerous more than a, a rebel army that takes over the state. It will be dangerous more than the military, the most indisciplined of, of military regimes. It will be dangerous more than a guerrilla force and, and an armed bandit that comes to power. Why? Because you will have men in suit, men educated in letters with constitution and law and their legal practice, they will destroy the country and there will be no recourse for repair. That is the danger we're looking at. So this is way beyond Samura Kamara. It's way beyond Madabio. It's a danger hidden in the APC and outside opposition groups allied with various interests, propelled and animated by legal professionals, both within the country and outside of the country, who have been scheming with this process unknown to many of us. That danger is what we should be afraid of, not the danger that Madabio poses. Madabio is it's done. It's done. And the worst part is we are talking about individuals, young cadre of citizens, all of them, and many of them between the ages of 35 to 55. So when you calculate that, you're talking about eight years. We cannot afford a Museveni kind of situation in Sierra Leone. We cannot afford a Kagame kind of situation in Sierra Leone. Any citizen who will support this is working against the interest, the future of Sierra Leone, the future of our kids, the future of generations, at least two generations or three generations. We cannot afford 60 years down the line after independence with the kind of horrible statistics we have, we cannot have a gangster state run by or intended to be run by a group of lawyers, rogue law lawyers for that matter. It's going to be dangerous. But the danger, Dandy. Those of you in the APC, young people, in other political parties who, who are unaware of this danger, who do not see this danger, will not say you are working against your interests. You are not working for your party. You are working for the hidden agenda, dangerous, selfish agenda of a few individuals who have stolen money and don't create all this madness that we experience today. That is what we should be scared of. So I want to stop now and thank everybody who has been here. Um, see you next week. And we'll continue with the um, conversation as we go along. Um, let me repeat, the truth does not require a crowd to be told. It does not require a rally. The truth does not require uh, thousands of people. It just requires a determined group of men and women. No matter how small they are, no matter how few they are. Because in the final analysis, truth has its own power. It can stand on its own. Nothing can defeat truth. And that I want to assure people then. And again, I want to emphasize, we can change a country without violence. We can change our society without mamikos. We can change, we can fight against corruption without violence. Societies can develop through ideas, through conversation, through dialogue through consensus building. That is what I support. And at that I encourage anybody who will believe in what we are saying, who supports what we are saying, do not encourage and support violence, especially the reactionary violence. Don't, do, don't, 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 don't be carried away. At the middle of, of registration, voter registration, many of the politicians were funding and supporting and encouraging demonstration instead of registration, demonstration. Nothing wrong with demonstration. 
but it has to have, there's a legitimate way, a peaceful way to protest. We can make our grievances, our disagreements known through peaceful means, and they can produce the result that we want. We cannot afford a situation where people will animate people wrongly. But look like what is happening now. These people are with all the dishonesty, with everything that happened. Members of parliament could not even request an inquest into the debts that have happened in the country for the last four and a half years. They cannot do it. They have the power to do it. They're not even, you will see them write about, oh, the burial, we went down, but no. Before even question, they, they, they kept the bodies of these young, innocent Sierra Leoneans who were murdered in cold blood on August 10 and, and, and the few days after August 10. Not only that, your politicians waited until the campo can talk about proportional representation and go say they don't bear them without their families having access to even the, the dead body there. Why? They want you, you, the citizens, to have a psychological terror. They are terrifying you psychologically. The message they are sending is that if we say proportional representation, anybody say they protest, we will kill you like I will kill eventually something, we will bury you like I will bury eventually something. Making the life of a citizen less important than the life of a chicken. And buried in the most harsh of conditions. Why? The politicians who have built the alliance with Mother Bihu and they want that to happen, they are psychologically terrorizing the people by sending that kind of terroristic message. They know what they do. But I've told them, the life of something is not less significant than the life of Mother Bihu, than the life of Kande Yom Kela, than the life of Salamina, and the life of Cherikoko. The lives of these politicians are not important more than the life of Evangelist Samson and any of these other people. If not a young pick in there, they may kill so. They say they go better now with Madame Bessel. They don't go remain silent. They don't begin the Guna Twitter. It'll be something else. It'll be something else. So we have to think. We have to be able to think as, I mean, not like somebody say, you take poison, you drink her. Say, because of you, know, I will drink the poison and die. No, you don't do that. You cannot follow a politician to the grave. Don't do that. They, will not, they do not do that for you. So no matter how they, how they like it, they're not going to do that. They loved Samson while he was alive. They, they liked him. But, they, but what did they do? What did your parliamentarians do, your parliamentary leaders do regarding the death of these innocent citizens? in their undignified burial. What role, when the August 10 was happening, they were in parliament. The days before they were in parliament. What is their responsibility and their role? In the, they had the power to stop this. Then they refused for one. Anyway, um, see you next week and thank you all. Um, this is the Frontline Show with me, Channel Alpha Bar. It's uh, a program brought to you through the help and support of Then and Now Media, we thank um, Mr. Prince Kuroma and the Then and Now Media team. Uh, until next week, we will see you now. After the show, you can share the link to your various friends and colleagues. Let's keep marching on. We're not for tired. For talk and speak truth to power. It's the only, it's the only thing that we have now, our voices, and let's use them productively. See you next week, and thank you. Goodbye.